Rocky Boy, Montana. I just came up with a, well, maybe I'll just see if anybody wants to get their picture taken with the red handprint on their face to raise awareness. So that's how it started. And then I just started to think, like, what is a large scale thing that people see that they have to see? And it, it, I just like, oh, I don't know, there's billboards. Lamar Billboards donates the space, but Buckley and her project are on a shoestring budget. I can raise the $200, it's up for a month, and then it comes down because I, I gotta wait till I have the, the next $200 to put it back up. It's needed because too often, attention goes elsewhere. Just look at that white female that went missing. Gabby Petito missing for weeks. And how many Native American females went missing in that same time period and there was nothing, so. Not a blip. Veteran Missoula police detective, Guy Baker. Those billboards are a great way to bring awareness to this very important issue. Important to Detective Baker because maybe a billboard will help him solve a case he's worked for four years, the missing Jermaine Charlo. Jermaine is the niece of Valenda Morijo, so close she feels like a sister. Yeah. During our visit, Valenda volunteered to be photographed by Jen Buckley. The work Jennifer is doing is important. I'm hoping that her work reaches outside of Montana, that we can get billboards in New York, all the way down to Texas and up into Canada. This, this is crisis and it needs to stop. How is it for you to know your sister has been gone these years now? It's, it's been extremely hard. Maybe this could make a difference. It will, it will, I know it will. Those billboards give voice to the voiceless. Thank you for joining us. It's an honor and privilege to get to tell these stories for NBC News, and we thank everyone that has allowed us to tell theirs. For more, be sure to stay tuned to Today All Day. And a big hello to everybody out there. Welcome to Pop Start Plus. We got a great one for you today. Did you miss the Golden Globes last night? Well, we got you covered. A full recap on everything you need to know. Plus, we're looking back on the beloved show Friends with one of its memorable stars. And we've got a very cool clip we're going to pull out of our vault with the late, great David Bowie, who would have just turned 76. But first, here are today's Pop Start headlines. We're going to start with Prince Harry. The book tour continues for the Duke of Sussex now. Spare is indeed finally out. Last night, he stopped by The Late Show with Stephen Colbert to discuss the many dramatic headlines coming from the memoir. But ending their conversation on a bit of a lighter note, Harry answered the question some people have been wondering about, and that's his Netflix binging history. Uh, you watched The Crown, right? You've got to have watched some of The Crown, right? <laughs> people love it. Like, yes, I have actually watched The Crown. Oh, yeah. Well, the yeah, recent it, stuff or, or the, the, the older stuff? Uh, the older stuff and the more recent stuff. Yeah. Um, Do you fact check it while you watch it? <laughs> Um, mm. Yes, I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, Foo Fighters. It's been a tough year for the Rock and Roll Hall of Famers following the loss of beloved drummer Taylor Hawkins back in March. But now they're getting ready to kick off the next chapter for the band. Yesterday, the Foo's announcing a set of headlining shows. Uh, the first set since Hawkins' passing. It'll be happening in May and June. They'll hit a couple festivals in Ohio. Uh, also, Boston, and they're going to do Bonnaroo oh. in Tennessee. The announcement comes not long after a reflective social media post they put out on New Year's Eve where the band teased plans for the new year, writing, without Taylor, we know that we're going to be a different band going forward, and we know that when we see you again, and we will soon, he'll be there in spirit with all of us every night. Good to see the food's getting back out. Next up, Leslie Jordan, the late yeah. comedian, is going to soon be celebrated in the biggest stage in Nashville, the Grand Old Opry. On Sunday, February 19th, Jordan's celebrity friends are set to honor his legacy with a show called Reporting for Duty, a tribute to Leslie Jordan. The Opry website described the special night as an intimate collection of performances and onstage storytelling with insights into some of Jordan's lasting lessons of a life well lived. Take a look at the roster of who's going to be swinging by. Performers include Eddie Vedder, Marin Morris, and the Brothers Osborne, plus appearances by Jim Parsons, Mayim Bialik, and Margaret Cho. There are, is a pre-sale dropping tickets tomorrow, but of course they officially go on sale on Friday. 
And finally, Ben Affleck, the star's legendary love of Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> just hit a whole new level. He's always photographed with a little Dunkin' coffee. Mm. Tuesday, Ben was spotted serving cups of the New England brew at Medford, Massachusetts mm. drive through Lucky patrons pulled up to the window to find the Oscar winner delivering their orders. <laughs> NBC News Boston reporting that customers were told that he was filming a commercial. One noted that the Dunk's new celebrity employee was very nice, very funny and quick-witted. <laughs> and of course, uh, by Ben's side was wife Jennifer Lopez. A video on social mm. media showing uh, them inside that store where Ben Affleck is holding onto an apron. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there is more to know. It is Popstar Plus, after all. First up, Ghostbusters. This one's for you, Uncle Al. Big news from one of the original cast members, Mr. Ernie Hudson, yesterday stopped by the Kelly Clarkson show and told guest host Nisi Nash about plans for the next chapter of the franchise. Yeah, yeah. You know, there there will be another Ghostbusters. Hey! That, that I can definitely say. You know, the, the last Ghostbusters was very, thanks to all the fans, they loved it, and now we'll be making another Ghostbusters. I love right? that. I love that. And I'm happy to say that... Um, Winston, the character I play, is now a billionaire, so he has a, has a little bit more freedom. Love that. That's great news. Finally, Bob Odenkirk. Better Call Saul may be over, but Odenkirk fans can rejoice. You won't have to wait too long for the Emmy-winning actor's return to the small screen. He is set to lead a new series on AMC+. Plus. It's called Lucky Hank, about a man going through a midlife crisis, and it does come from the same executive producer as Breaking Bad and Saul. Here's a look at the first teaser. I've always been a difficult man. I specialize in minor strife and insignificant irritation. That's my lane. Lucky Hank starts streaming in March. That's going to be great. Still to come, the highlights from last night's big Golden Globes, all the big moments and winners right after this. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece to the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. And welcome back. The Golden Globes returned last night. Our buddy Jason Kennedy was up late on the red carpet for us with a great carpet with a recap of all the glitz, glamour, and winners. There certainly was an elephant in the room at last night's Golden Globes, but overall, the mood was one of celebration as Hollywood honored the best of TV and film. Overnight at the 80th Golden Globes, Mr. Spielberg, step right up here. Steven Spielberg captured two globes for his work on The Fablemans. The film, inspired by his own childhood, won Best Picture Drama and Best Director. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out when I could tell that story, and I figured out when I turned about 74 years old, I said, you better do it now. <laughs> It was also a big night for the Banshees of Inishirin, the film corralling three awards, including Best Musical or Comedy and Best Screenplay. Last year's show was not televised following an explosive Los Angeles Times report exposing the lack of diversity among members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and alleged ethical lapses. Settle, settle, settle. settle. First-time host Gerard Carmichael kicked off the show with an understated start, but didn't mince words when addressing the controversy. I won't say they were a racist organization, but they didn't have a single black member until George Floyd died. 
Still, the show looked to rebound from its troubled past. Well, we're just going to keep the black girl magic going. Quinta, get up here, girl! As actors of color took home many of the night's top prizes. Everything Everywhere All at Once is Kiwe Kwan and Wakanda Forever's Angela Bassett were awarded for their supporting performances. Bassett paying tribute to her late co-star in the franchise, Chadwick Boseman. We were surrounded each and every day by the light and the spirit of Chadwick Boseman. And veteran actress Michelle Yeoh clinched her first Globe win for her mind-blowing lead role in the sci-fi comedy Everything Everywhere All at Once. This is also for all the shoulders that I've stand on, all who came before me, who looks like me, and all who are going on this journey with me forward. While Jennifer Coolidge checked in her first globe, thanking the White Lotus's creator. You sort of changed my life in a million different ways, and my neighbors are speaking to me, things like that. The top prize for best actor in a motion picture drama went to Austin Butler for his rockin' performance in the Elvis biopic. And the Presley family, thank you guys. Thank you for opening your hearts. Your, your memories, your home to me. Eddie Murphy accepted the Cecil B. DeMille Award and gave others his so-called blueprint for success. Pay your taxes. <laughs> mind your business. And keep Will Smith's wife's name. Oh, people were loving that. On the TV side, Abbott Elementary won Best Comedy. House of the Dragon took Best Drama. Kevin Costner won Best Actor for Yellowstone, but couldn't make it because of the extreme weather. It led to another highlight of the night when Regina Hall, who accepted the award on his behalf, didn't buy his absence and what became this tongue-in-cheek moment, but then clarified he had to shelter in place in Santa Barbara, saying, let's pray, everyone. Some laughed, <laughs> some didn't. Check out this next conversation right here on Popstar Plus. Award season is back, and the stars showed up in looks to match the festive occasion. You ever just geek out thinking about all the cool stuff you get to do? I am geeking out quite a lot. <laughs> there was glitz and glamour. Getting to be around uh, all these other artists that I admire so much, and I just feel very grateful. With the biggest names in film and television serving up some major sparkle. It felt like it was time to sparkle a little. Angela Bassett won for her big screen performance and her look. With chilly weather in Los Angeles, some accessorized with gloves and capes. Valentino cape at Neiman's. Others bared the cold and bared some skin. Atelier Versace, and it's designed by Donatella, and I just love it so much. Jenna Ortega spilled her secret to style success. My fingers are a bit too slim, so I wear tape underneath my rings. That is a secret. It's not a secret anymore. Jewel tone gowns made these leading ladies look like queens. But for others, purple reigns supreme. This is actually heliotrope. I am that so sorry. Would be aubergine. Purple is the color. It's royalty. It's regal. Couture perfection in pretty pastels and creams adorned with flowing ruffles and jewels. These frocks prove black is always a classic. It really gives me like kind of a Grace Kelly thing. The men looked dapper too. I think you look phenomenal. Wearing tuxedos in every shade of the rainbow. You and I got the memo. Yes, we did. We clean up well. And plenty of velvet. Some accessorizing their suits with some flair. You gotta get some shine. Henry Winkler used his fashion as a good luck charm. My son, Jed, said, do not wear the same tie you wore when you lost last time. So I chose another one. And Billy Porter proved once again he's in a class of his own. Hollywood's A-list earning high marks for fashion, setting the bar for the first award show carpet catwalk of the season. Al Roker, it's Niecy Nash Betts and Jessica Betts, and we want to say welcome back. I just want to give a big shout to Al Roker. I knew you would make it. You're my guy. You're my OG. Peace out to you, baby. Al is back. America is so happy that you are there. Al Roker, I'm talking to you, and I'm glad you're feeling better, because I was scared. Al, you're my pal. Oh, glad you're back. We depend on you. Mm, you're here, here. Oh, my space. God. You got wow. friends everywhere. Wow. Yikes. Man. So was that Al? You're usually on that red carpet. I know, usually, I know, I miss that. They're missing you oh too. Oh my gosh, that was fantastic. Oh, we the Fonz. Come on. Steven Spielberg. Look at Jesse you. Nash. I mean, right. and I, now I got People magazine. I'm just. That's right. Shirley Ralph. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more. 
You're on the okay, cover of People. It's a bit too much now. <laughs> no, this is really a cool article that you talk about your journal, jur your journey, and everything that you've been through. Just uh, big shout out to your family and to yeah. Deborah. Yeah. Must feel kind of surreal. And the doctors and, and all of you. You know. How, how's it been? We haven't had a chance to check it's, back it's in a little good, bit. It's been good. You know, I mean, yeah. really, it's it's like nice being back. It's nice getting dressed. Yeah. <laughs> smelling nice. Wearing <laughs> pants. <laughs> wearing pants with zippers. You know. Do you get a real the nice folks out there? Yeah. Yeah. Do you get a real sense of what a national treasure you yeah. are? I ask that yes, because I should be everywhere fair. I go or we go, yes. it is what everybody asks. Yeah. How's Al? How's I can't yeah. imagine what it's like for you. You know, uh, it's special. It really is. You know, you you do feel the love. Usually, you get this after you're dead. <laughs> so, but maybe I am, and no. this is just all part of my hell. No. I but I know this is heaven. Believe me. But you always say it's like he pointed at the crew and said, "Love is a healer. The prayers are a yeah. healer." Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was getting off a plane yesterday. The, the, the pilot. Everybody. The pilot. The pilot. I'm getting off. He said, "Hey." How's Al? Yeah, everybody. Yeah. It's like, uh, We're stuff. clear to land on 22. Let's hide Al Roker. <laughs> right. well, By the way, that People magazine, yeah. it's on newsstands nationwide yeah. on Friday in Los Angeles and here in New yeah. York today. All right. Thank you. Cool, Al. Thank you. After the break, we're going to hear from the actress who played Janice on Friends, sharing the inspiration behind the character's unforgettable voice. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. And we're back here on Popstar Plus. Could Janice's laugh be any more memorable? Maggie Wheeler gave voice to the Friends character throughout the show's 10 seasons. And for our flashback series today, she told us what it was like to work with Matthew Perry and bringing her character to life. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. You, you wish, wish Chandler Bing. Bing, you are looking at a married lady now. You are looking at a married lady now. Janice is loving and um, slightly unaware. Uh, she doesn't really know what people are saying about her behind her back, but she always assumes the best in people, and uh, I love her. Hello! <laughs> the inspiration for Janice's voice really came from the writing. When I saw that first audition scene and, and she said, I, oh, I bought you these socks, mix and match, moose and squirrel. Well, I knew you had the Rockies, and so I figured, you know, you could wear Bullwinkle and Bullwinkle, or you could wear Rocky and Rocky, or you can mix and match moose and squirrel, <laughs> whatever you want. Really, I heard her. I knew who she was to me. 
you can never be sure if whoever is casting or the producers are going to be thinking the same way. But for me, I knew who I wanted to play. And, uh, and so that's what I did. And then the laugh was born on set, working with Matthew because he's too darn funny. And I knew I was going to laugh. And I thought, well, this character better have a good laugh because Matthew's likely to crack me up more than once. Night, night, bing a -ling. Night, night, Janice. <laughs> I loved everything about Chandler's relationship with Janice because it was great fodder for comedy. So, you know, he didn't make Janice very happy. He was constantly uh, disappointing her. But for me as an actor, you know, I just absolutely loved opening the script when it came to my door and just finding out yet again, what were they going to do with Janice and Chandler? What was going to go wrong with them and what was going to go right with them? Oh my God. Working with Matthew was extraordinary. He's incredibly funny. His timing is amazing. He's very generous on set. He's just a wonderful actor to work with. And really, the entire cast of Friends is as, as wonderful as you imagine them to be. We had a great time working together, and, uh, and everybody was incredibly wel welcoming to me. And, uh, and it was just a great environment in which to make comedy. I have very wonderful fond memories of playing this character and I have many favorite moments. Uh, having to say goodbye to Chandler in the airport, 15 Yemen Road, Yemen writing his address down and knowing that I was going to write him where he actually wasn't going, uh, that was a high moment. I'll write you every day. 15 Yemen Road, Yemen. I happen to love the Valentine's episode. Happy Valentine's Day. Where they get set up on a blind date uh, at, at the restaurant and she tells him that she's cut his head out of every picture that she has of the two of them and he can use them as puppets in his theater of cruelty. By the way, Chandler, I cut you out of all my pictures, so if you want, I have a bag with just your heads. <laughs> That's another big favorite moment. And of course, uh, you know, giving birth with Jennifer and with Rachel in, 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 uh, in the labor room. It's you. This is yours. What? <laughs> ah, look how nervous he gets. We haven't slept together in years. <laughs> I get approached by fans fairly frequently because Friends is now, you know, it, it already had an incredible fan base and now there are kids watching it. Netflix, you know, has brought friends to so many more millions of people. So I get stopped all over the place by people of every age and every nationality. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing how many people love this show. Fans come up to me and they say, You love me, Chandler Bing. You just don't know you love me. You want me. You need me. You can't live without me. And you know it. You just don't know you know it. <laughs> Where would Janice be today? Let's see. Uh, I think that uh, if her kids are out of the house, I think she's probably designing a line of clothing, some leopard print clothing. Why not? And, you know, I do. I think she's got a relationship advice blog and that she's just giving a lot of wonderful advice. She had a lot of experiences, good and bad, and I think she's got lots to offer. I think that Friends is, in a strange way, this wonderful universal uh, uh, experience of, of watching people grow up, of watching people, uh, you know, manage conflict and disappointment and success and romance and, uh, and friendship. So, uh, and I just think that the writing is so funny. It endures and it endures year after year. Who doesn't love a good Friends flashback moment? I know you do. Coming up, speaking of flashing back, we're going to honor a true legend. We've got an awesome clip we're yanking from our vault featuring the one and only David Bowie. That's next. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world. 
Download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I love riding the This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> and welcome back to Popstar Plus. This past weekend would have been the late, great David Bowie's 76th birthday. And yesterday marked six years since his passing, we thought we'd remember him through this clip when he stopped by the Today Show back in 1992 to talk about his music and also his acting career. David Bowie, good morning. Good morning. A screen kiss to start the day. <laughs> well, not a bad way to start. David Bowie is Monty uh, with Roseanne Arquette. I, before we get into the plot about this, this uh, film, I understand you lobbied for a role in it. How come? I was crazy for it, and I, li I love the script. I thought it was uh, really one of the funniest scripts I'd read in a long time. The script... But, uh, funnily enough, the way that it's transpired, it, 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 it's more of a light comedy than an all-out belly-laugh type movie. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's quite delightful. It gave me a chance to, to do something like that, to not be a Martian, but I still get to wear aluminum shirts. Well, we're getting ahead, <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, you're alluding to the fact that Hollywood always... I shouldn't say always. Hollywood likes to typecast you as either a, an alien or somebody with emotional problems, somebody who's a little strange. Yeah, I've had, a, I had a, an awful lot of that for the first few years, although over the last couple of years things have changed. I, it, and ironically enough, there have been films that I've actually turned down because I didn't want to do them. At the risk of oversimplification, Linguini Incident has, has you as uh, Monty, a somewhat mysterious character who's... Uh, a young Englishman who's laid a bet with various people to marry one of the waitresses in this particular restaurant. Yeah. But, Do you, did you like Monty, or is that essential to portraying him correctly? I, I liked his lines. <laughs> I liked the lines. I'm not very good at the deep inner conflict stuff, you know? Why not? I, it would I, seem that I'm you not, would be. Well, I have my own to contend with. <laughs> so I guess that all, all I do, I just shove that onto the role, and it just becomes part of the role. Does David Bowie get in the way of, of, of playing the role any more difficult David than... David Bowie is a real complex guy. <laughs> well, he is, with musical uh, terms at all times. I don't know. I spent a few, two or three days with the director, obviously, uh, during the uh, pre-shoot, and, and by the t I hope that by the time we get to actually shooting uh, preconceptions about me, if, uh, if there are any, which I just don't believe, um, it's pretty much broken down, I hope. The, the director, Richard Shepard, said he can't understand why you've never been cast in a romantic lead before. Can you? It's my teeth. <laughs> it's my teeth. I have an English dentist. <laughs> an English dentistry background. But there are English you, you films. Have to have, you have, yes, <laughs> but we, we've forgotten how to make straightforward romances. This is um, your first comedy. Yes. Well, some people wouldn't agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's put it, let me rephrase that. You never saw Just a Gigolo. <laughs> this, this is the first film you're, you are in that is billed as a comedy. Yeah, that's right, yeah. The, the film is, is offbeat. Let's take a, an, another look at an example of, of, of the kind of comedy you were talking about. Uh, in this scene, I think breakfast is served. Morning, I'm Monty. I'm Pev. Pleased to meet you. What are you lovely ladies burning this morning, little pillows? Marshmallows. Marshmallows. There's another hanger in the closet if you care to join us. Uh, breakfast off, then. This is breakfast. What's the matter? Don't you like marshmallows? 
I don't think I've ever had one. Are they in one of the four basic food groups? They're in the white group. <laughs> I'll get a hanger immediately. Boom, boom. Her. <laughs> in addition... Shall I sing that? No, 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 no. the white group. <laughs> the white group, not to be confused with Tin Machine, which is, which is uh, the newest band you're working with. You're still working as a solo artist. Yeah. It, which has priority these days, your acting career or your music career? Oh, music always. Really? Absolutely, yeah. That's never going to change? No. No, I love, I live... I live, I really do. Cliche coming up, I live for my music. It's something I just cannot stop doing. Every morning I can wake up and feel like I'm the luckiest guy alive doing what I do. I, lo I love working in that kind of abandoned situation where it really sort of, I mean, it's like, any art form is like, is like uh, flying a plane which crashes in flames. You just get up and walk away from it. Nobody is injured. You can afford to make mistakes. You can afford to do that kind you of thing. You can survive wrecks and in you the can entertainment survive business? Wrecks. <laughs> yeah. I've worked with enough. Final notice, I suspect most folks know by now you're getting married in the morning. Not quite the morning, but uh, uh, come the summer. Early July. Yeah, yeah. early July yeah. to Iman. Yeah. Um, excited? Nervous? Terribly. Terribly. Not nervous, excited. Very excited. I mean, it's been a long time for me since uh, I've been married. But, uh, <laughs> but what? I don't know. I didn't say but. Oh, well, I, I was just providing you with a lead-off line, but <laughs> pick it up and run with it, will you? <laughs> <laughs> David Bowie, good luck with it. Thank you very much indeed. Congratulations. Take care. Wow, always really cool to see and hear from David Bowie like that. All right, people, that's going to do it. Thanks for joining us for another Popstar Plus. We appreciate it. Of course, we'll have more great stuff for you tomorrow. We'll see you then. nutritionist Joy Bauer has two hearty slow cooker recipes that you can set it and forget it. Hey guys, it's no secret that I am in love with my slow cooker. And if you're like me, you are really going to enjoy these recipes. The first one is eggplant parmesan. So I'm starting with two large eggplants. I'm just going to trim and then I'm going to slice them into about half inch rounds. I have paper towels lining a baking sheet here. We're going to salt the tops to help draw out some of the bitter water. And this is also gonna help our eggplant slices to keep their form within the slow cooker. So these need to sit 30 to 60 minutes. And while we're waiting, we're gonna head over to the stove to make our garlicky walnut breadcrumbs. So first I'm adding one cup of whole grain panko breadcrumbs, one cup of crushed walnuts. And I saute this for about 10 minutes on a medium flame. And I'm gonna add in some garlic, some dried basil, and some black pepper. I'm gonna take this off the heat, and we're gonna mix in some parm. I'm gonna take you back to our eggplant now. I'm gonna press down with paper towels onto my eggplants, which have been sitting because I'm sopping up a lot of the excess water. I'm gonna season up our slices with some garlic, oregano, and a little bit of black pepper. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of tomato sauce to line the bottom. And now the fun part starts. You line the bottom of your slow cooker. Then for your garlicky walnut breadcrumbs, more sauce. I've got part skim mozzarella cheese, calcium, protein, and of course, cheesy goodness. And you're gonna repeat the same exact thing with two more layers. So you have three luscious layers in total. And now for the easiest part. Put on the lid and cook it on high for about three hours and 30 minutes. Guys, this is so good. And now we're gonna mix things up. 
I'm gonna take you over to my island and we're going to make a salsa verde chicken chili. And I'm starting with butternut squash. And butternut is packed with potassium, it's got beta carotene, great for your immune system, and so many other nutrients. Some onion, of course, a green bell pepper, finely diced. And this is a jalapeno. So this chili is customizable to whatever spice you want. And now I'm adding salsa verde. And this is reduced sodium chicken broth. I'm gonna mix this around and I'm adding in loads of spices. And I'm gonna mix this around again all the flavors, get them nice and well combined. And you're gonna add in two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I'm submerging the chicken into the liquid. Put the cover on and let it cook on high for about four hours. 30 minutes before it's done cooking, carefully take out all of the chicken breasts, then add in two cans of rinsed and drained beans. Stir the beans, put the top on, let everything simmer, and while that's simmering, you're gonna shred your chicken. Then put the chicken back into the slow cooker, stir everything together so the chicken can sop up all of that scrumptious liquid. Oh my goodness, guys, this is so yummy. The flavors all complement each other. Mm, this will definitely warm your soul this weekend. That Yum. is good. Yeah, All right. Uh, for these recipes and so much more, go to today.com slash food. Joy Bauer is featuring some of Laura's favorite foods. What I a great this. time. Yes. This All is, right. This is going to be great. So we each have a food, and we're starting with apples, which apples, I've never... Apples, and I love that you love apples. First, apple is like the ultimate superfood because it's perfectly portioned, it's totable, it's naturally sweet, and in the skin of the apple is a, a type of fiber that's called pectin, which helps to lower our cholesterol. Awesome. So how do you do it? So you're so, making a frittata? Uh, yeah, so I wanted to do something, you know, a little bit different for you and show you a new fuss-free recipe that you can make at home. Exciting. So we're making an apple, sausage, and caramelized onion frittata. Sound good? Oh, <laughs> sounds delicious. Okay, so here what I've done is I, I took a Granny Smith apple because for this recipe, I love the tart flavor, mm. and I sauteed it with Enjoy some it? onion. Then I'm adding in, this is an apple right. and poultry four. breakfast sausage. Okay. It's, it's one of the pre-cooked, mm -hmm. and you add it, hold on yeah. to this, Jill. I can't believe this is Joy approved yes. with all this. And right? this is a combination of whole eggs and egg whites with a little bit of fresh thyme and a little bit of dry mustard because it gives yeah. it that real oh, savory nice. taste. Okay. And oh how's about, before we put this in the oven, mm -hmm. all we're going to do is top it with a little bit of grated, shredded cheddar in the oven on 400 for about 15 There's to 17 nice minutes. That. And that's mm -hmm. it. Isn't that great? It's phenomenal. Oh you like it? Yeah, delicious. Amazing. I can delicious. eat that all day long. It is. So here's my challenge. You're going to make that nice this week, and you're going to tag me on Instagram. I want to see that you made it. <laughs> you got a nice kind of Asian flair here. So the next food is chicken. And I love that you picked chicken because it's busting with protein, which helps to maintain our metabolisms mm -hmm. and our muscle mass. So that's great. But I think a lot of people get caught up with the same old boring chicken recipe right. over and over. So I thought we would tackle a big popular one, Chinese chicken and broccoli. Do you Ooh. like that? Ooh, Ooh, who doesn't? Excellent. Yes. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is, um, it's all about the sauce. This is so simple. It's a rice vinegar with a little bit of reduced sodium soy sauce mm -hmm. and some ginger and garlic. And I put in a drop of either arrowroot or cornstarch mm -hmm. just so it will thicken it up. You saute the broccoli. Let's right. make believe we saute this for about three minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab this. We pour the remainder of the sauce in there. Okay. And while Thank this you. is sauteing, the sauce is gonna start to really thicken up. Mm -hmm. And once Thank the broccoli you. gets mm -hmm. softened, you add in your chicken and that's it, guys. That so is it. That's brown. it. That's it. Yes, I had already browned the chicken. Phenomenal. Okay. Is, is that easy? Time. Is, is that, that amazing? amazing? Okay, before we run potato. out of time. So this last yeah. one is a little bit kooky, delicious. but bear with me because mm -hmm. it is insanely delicious. Okay. Do you like pie a la mode? I'm still eating sure. this. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make a roasted 
sweet potato a la mode. And it just works. So mm -hmm. sweet potatoes are busting with beta carotene. All right. I oven roasted this. We're going to slice it in half. Mm -hmm. And this is going to become the base of your pie. Oh. You shred this inside, oh. but you're going to keep the skin intact. And then this is a special spice blend. It's a combination of all the wintry, cozy spices. Mm -hmm. We have ginger, nutmeg, uh, cinnamon. Almost like sweet potato pie. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's what we're basically making yeah. here. Oh, wow. And awesome. So yeah. then what are you going to do with this? You're going to top it with ice a cream. scoop of light ice, ice cream. cream. And just to bring it on home, oh. this is a salt and maple infused toasted pecans oh, that you top it on top. You have to try this, guys. That's amazing. Put on. You eat it with a, oh, Here. Oh, it's in there. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's amazing. I, we gave, I gave you guys bite-sized pieces thank going you. for this. That is terrific. Is that great? That's amazing. Uh, Joy and Laura, thank you so very much. Mm. Happy New Year. Congratulations. It's going to be a great New Year for you. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer remixing boring lunch sandwiches with two tasty wraps. Oh, Joy. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm celebrating the weekend with two deliciously healthy wraps, a chicken Caesar wrap and a caprese Caesar wrap. So the common theme here is my lightened up creamy Caesar dressing with a surprising ingredient, and that would be an avocado. So I'm gonna pop all of this right into a blender. Next, some Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and garlic, W sauce, some lemon juice, Dijon mustard for some tang, and then optional anchovy paste. And last but not least, six tablespoons of water. And we're gonna whirl this up in a blender. You can see how creamy this is. It tastes just like the real deal, but for a fraction of the calories. This is just 20 calories per tablespoon, so you can feel good about using a lot. Now for the build, starting with a chicken Caesar salad. I'm adding crunchy romaine lettuce together with some grated Parmesan cheese and some sliced cooked chicken with some of our homemade Caesar dressing. Just stir this all up and lay out a tortilla that fits your eating style. I have whole wheat tortilla, but it can be gluten-free, low carb, anything goes. Spread on some of our Caesar dressing right on the tortilla. It's got a nice green color from the avocado. I think that adds personality and fun and add in the yummy filling. Tuck in the sides, and then you roll it right up. It's so simple, it's so delicious, and every bite is packed with protein, fiber, and tons of flavor. Next up, a Caprese Caesar wrap, if you feel like going meat-free. This time I'm using a tomato-themed tortilla. I'm putting on some of my creamy Caesar, spreading it out, and simply layering irresistible calcium-packed mozzarella cheese, 
juicy vitamin C filled and lycopene filled tomatoes, and of course, some fragrant aromatic basil leaves. Tuck in the sides and roll this right up. How easy was that? This is so good. Whether you choose to make a chicken Caesar or a Caprese Caesar, that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yum. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. I'm sure you've seen videos of people making these butter boards all over your feed. So, of course, you know, everyone wants to try it. And today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here. But you have a special spin on it. At first, I was like, okay, no way you're <laughs> making a butter board. <laughs> and I was right. This, is, this first one is a little bit more of a Mediterranean board. Yeah, I think you're gonna love this. So we're putting a healthy spin on the trend. And this first one, to your point, I'm calling a Mediterranean hummus board, and it's starting with hummus. So here I have two cups of hummus, and it can either be store-bought, or if you're super motivated, you could make your own. And then you spread it out onto a board. Now my board is about 19 inches. So if you want to scale this down, it's very easy to just use a smaller amount of hummus and you can make a single portion or maybe split between two people. But I love this because you could also bring it to a host that's yeah. having a party. I mean, it's like, it's a big statement, right? And you see how easy Already it is to just spread it out. Make it there. Well, you could do either, Al, because I'm going to show you how Lickety Split this comes together. So after it's spread, now you're going to add all of these yummy toppings. So I have here some smoky paprika because I just love the taste of that. And I'm adding, these are just canned sliced black olives mm -hmm. over the top. So the idea is we're building all of these layers of yummy, nutritious Mediterranean goodies. And now we have some chopped um, onion, and now I'm going to put on a lot of greens. Here I'm doing chives and I'm doing some scallions, but you could do cilantro or That's parsley, great. really That's anything great. goes. And then lastly, to top it off, and Al, this I would do when you get there to yeah. the party. A little bit of extra virgin olive oh, oil, okay. and then you just surround it with sturdy scoopers. So I have, I love sturdy using... Scoop. <laughs> yeah, because you, you don't want them to droop. So yeah. I have here a I lot of sliced do. cucumbers okay. and, of course, some whole grain crackers. Okay. And I also have um, oh, yeah. sliced, warm sliced bread. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, Endive spears. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, this is great over here. And guys, look at these, like, I mean, bell peppers. I got large bell peppers, but also the little baby bellas. Mm -hmm. And you could put that all over. And you've got this gorgeous, gorgeous, colorful bowl That's that awesome. just came together in a couple of and, minutes. And then so I love this one. And now, Joy, you've got a, a sweet board. Oh, it's yummy. I'm really excited to share this one with you. So we're taking a very different direction here, and we're going to do an addictively sweet dessert bowl. Mm. And dessert bowl. It's a spread, or it could be a board. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a pumpkin peanut butter. We're leveling mm. up peanut butter, which already has a lot of heart-healthy fat. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is I'm adding equal parts. So this is about half a cup of creamy peanut butter. If oh. there's nut allergies in the house, you could swap in any other nut butter. And this is 100% um, pumpkin puree. Okay. Oh, and I add this yeah. together. Now I'm going to sweet sweeten it up because it is a dessert. I just looked I'm going to put thinking they would roll some in, but that didn't happen. <laughs> I <laughs> wish a little bit of that's maple syrup. You could also use brown sugar, or if you want to go in a no added sugar direction, uh -huh. you could certainly use one of the stevia or the monk fruit mm -hmm. blends. Could you use a little honey? And then, yeah, honey would be good too. You could absolutely use honey. Joy maker. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and then, you know what? I tried it with honey. It, uh -huh. To me, um, I preferred the maple syrup, and I also okay. preferred the um, brown it's your, sugar. It's your but recipe. Definitely you do honey. You. <laughs> yeah, but other, you could absolutely use honey for honey lovers, for sure. Yeah. So you keep stirring. This is nice and smooth. Now, let me show you what it looks like. Good. You're going to love it. And over here, mm, I've loaded up my board with, um, again, sturdy scoopers. Oh, so here we have scoopers. apple yes. slices. Yes. Pears. It's pear season, so I have pears graham and crackers. also graham crackers. Oh, we gotta go for the graham crackers. I'm making crackers. this as a snack for my kids today. Nice. All right, so thank, you. So, thank you, Joy. Yeah. So good. Thank you so much. That looks that looks very doable. I gotta get some pumpkin. This is what it looks and feels. What the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News streaming free now. 
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. <laughs> we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens. Wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. A nutrition and health expert Joy Bowers here to show us not one but two recipes that are flat out <laughs> delicious. Joy, good to see you. Good morning. Happy fall. Good to see you guys, and I love that flat out. And that makes perfect sense because our first recipe is scarpaccia, which is really a savory zucchini flatbread, and it mm. sort of combines three carby favorites: cornbread, a tart and focaccio, mm. all wrapped up in one. And I think you guys are gonna love it. Okay. And the first thing that I did was, now it's, zucchini is really a summer veggie, but you can get it through the end of September and, and it tends to be readily available year round as well. So we're gonna kind of just for today, call it a fall veggie as well. So I took, I sliced it very thin. So these are two small zucchini and an onion. And I, I'm showing you this because before we get started, I sauteed them and made them nice and soft. Can you see that? Yeah. And I got all of the water out. We're just gonna set this aside now and I'm gonna make the batter. So normally you make a regular flour when, when um, creating a scarpaccia, but I'm gonna make this gluten-free and ensure that it has a whole lot of protein and fiber. So this is an almond flour and I packed it. So you know that it has a lot of, again, gluten-free protein, as well as fiber, a little bit of cornmeal. So this is where the cornbread comes in. Okay. One egg, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some salt, hey, Joy, and one- flour, or, Joy, sorry, does almond flour taste different? So it, it has a little bit of a sweet, nutty flavor. Um, it's really lovely. It doesn't mm -hmm. work in all recipes, but it works beautifully in this one. Okay. And I also added, one cup of water and that's going to be your batter and you just okay. mix this whole entire thing together and then i'm going to add in those veggies that i sauteed and you can sort of see yeah so i'm adding those in and now you know that every single bite is going to have a juicy action-packed veggie and you see that i also put in sliced cherry tomatoes yeah. because this is going to be a wonderful pop of color when you see the finished cool down a minute and how and long now do you bake that I, so i line my casserole dish this is a nine by 13 with parchment paper because i'm going to show you how easy it is to lift it out okay. and i pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for anywhere from 50 to 60 minutes now the inside is super duper moist and the top has like this crispy oh. top finish. Can you see this? And yeah. you can see how easy it was to lift it out. And there it is. And guys, it is great for breakfast with some scrambled Yum. eggs. You could have it with lunch with a colorful salad or for dinner, you could have it as a side or you could have it as a snack yeah. any time of the day. Joy, so basically eat it all day long. We've got, we've got about two minutes left for the chocolate grape bar. Yum. 
Okay, so this I love. I love grapes, and obviously I love chocolate. And I thought, why not make a bark bejeweled with bejeweled. juicy, nutrient-rich okay. grapes? And there's only two ingredients of this, and it worked brilliantly. So the first thing I did was melted some semi-sweet or dark chocolate chips. Oh, guys, look at yeah. this. Mm. Whoa. I know. <laughs> That's just and the chips melted. Just the chips okay. melted. And you can use a double boiler or take the easy way out like I did, and I just melt them right in the microwave. Oh. And so pour it over your baking sheet. Again, I'm all about the parchment paper this That's morning. That's a great idea because it's easy. And then... You have your grapes, and what I love about grapes, the skins have resveratrol, which is a plant compound that could help reduce the risk for certain diseases. It's mm. so good for us. And uh, I use two different colors for a pop, yeah. and you slice them in half or quarters, and you put them all over on top, and all you then need to do is you pop this right into either the freezer or the fridge. Okay. And look at this, guys. The chocolate yeah. firms up, mm. and you have these amazing pieces of bark. Great and chocolate. it looks like in this picture that the grapes are just sitting on top but they're actually pressed within yeah. the chocolate like yeah. i show you great. see they joy. don't fall oh, off joy, thank you thank you so much joy have a yeah. great weekend it looks delicious for the you recipes too, thank for you. the recipes folks as yeah. always it's today.com slash food Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love yeah, I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is celebrating by making cinnamon sugar donut holes. Yum. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Oh, my gosh. We are making bite-sized delights that are crazy good. And they're only 40 calories a pop. Really? They are super simple to prep. Yes. And it's like the perfect way to satisfy a sweet tooth without going overboard. Ooh. And because they're only 40 calories a pop, I'm saying a serving is three or four. And that's good because they are addictive. And you say you only <laughs> need two ingredients? So there's only two ingredients plus water for okay. the batter. And here it is. So I'm taking a standard box cake mix, either oh. yellow or white vanilla. And what I do you put like? it in my mixing bowl. Um, I tried it with both. I, I actually think it's just, you know, equally delicious. Okay. So, you know, whatever you have on hand or whatever's on sale. Okay. And next I have, um, so this is one cup of unsweetened applesauce. And okay. you can use a plain flavored or a cinnamon, eater's choice. Nice. And then just one cup of water. Wait, so I'm this adding is life changing. This in. So you don't need the okay, oil and the egg it. that you normally add to the cake mix? Nothing. What? You just mix this up and it's going to whip into this luxurious this batter. Is amazing. And then you take, so I have here, this is a donut hole tin. You can see that mm -hmm. it's round on the bottom, but you can also use a muffin, a mini muffin oh, yeah. tin, if that's okay. what you have on hand. And what I've done is I filled the batter three quarters of the way. You don't want to overfill it because it's going to poof in the oven. And I put it on 325 for 15 to 20 minutes. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. You're not hey, going to believe this. Awesome, this. Joy. I'm so yeah. intrigued by this. <laughs> okay. 
And, and it makes a lot. It makes 48. So if you have multiple mu um, donut hole tins or mini muffin tins, you could put them all in at the same time. But if you don't, you'll make them in batches. So guys, look, they you pop out. Now, look at that. The, the underneath is a perfect circle. It's a little bit sphere-like on the top, but that's okay because underneath you pop them upside down. They're just oh, beautiful. And yeah. so we have to take it over the top now with a dusting of sugary cinnamon mm. goodness. Okay. So here I have um, two tablespoons of sugar. And it sounds like, you know, oh my God, she's putting sugar and cinnamon. There's just a dusting on everything. And these are so much lower in sugar and fat and calories than the real McCoy. Okay. And then I have a heaping quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Okay. And I'm just going to mix this up. I love and I have a little... This is melted butter. It's just a tablespoon. And I have a little brush. And this I take my brush awesome. and I dip <laughs> the underneath. I know, right? Guys, I put this in the addictive category. I'm telling you. I want this And you right can now. either sprinkle the um, topping on or you can yeah, just dunk, dunk it. Right it in. Just like this. <laughs> you should see our faces <laughs> right now, Joy. We're like longing right now to come through Guys, the screen. This is, I, I just made a whole bunch. I mean, we're talking a hole in one. <laughs> wow. Me. They're soft, they're moist, they're filled with cakey deliciousness, but that dusting brings it over the top. I just, it, it's a little bit mean, but I'm going to take a bite because I just got to show you the inside. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. As you should. So, Joy, I'm just mm. wondering, I know, like, injectables are, are, were all the rage at, at one point. Could you inject those with anything, like, like a strawberry jam? Or? Well, now you're just <laughs> you trying put, to make me do too much. You, you totally can. You could put anything into the middle. What I would say is first let them cook in the oven because mm -hmm. I want to firm up that cake. And then you just inject whatever you want into the inside. If you want to get that inside warm, you could put it back in the oven for a minute or two. So it's sort of like oozes. Oh, my goodness. And then you could do your topping. Yeah. I'm just These listen. are insanely <laughs> We're delicious. Sold. And one, one other thing I'll say is that if you want to boost the superpowers, instead of the one cup of applesauce, you can also swap in one cup of canned pumpkin puree oh, wow. or canned sweet potato. Okay. Well, and I it just takes it in a little bit of a different flavor direction. But, like, honestly, again, guys, I just, it's so mean. I just got everything about it. Yeah. Joy, thank you so I'm much. doing it this weekend. Thank right? you, Joy. That and we want to come over to this beautiful kitchen. So between the two things, it's just um, magic. Come, You guys are invited over any day of the week. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Joy. And for this recipe, although this one we actually might remember, Without it. Yeah, without the recipe. Right? Yeah. Today.com slash food. Love it. It is a long journey to this moment. You're watching the Academy Awards. Can you start by sharing the story of when you were 10 years old? Oh, that story. And you're watching the Academy Awards, wow. the limos, the glam, and then they announced that Sidney Poitier wins the Academy Award. I was, sitting, I was sitting on the linoleum floor, and as I think about it, I can feel the linoleum. And watching on a Magnavox black and white TV, and Sidney Poitier getting out of a limousine is the first time I've actually seen a black man getting out of a limousine, and nobody was dead. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that got my attention. And then he wins. And I don't even think I knew at the time what an Oscar was, because it wasn't like I was 10 years old in Milwaukee and it wasn't like I was watching movies. But standing there watching him receive the award is the first time I had the thought, because we were called colored at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had the thought that if a colored man could do that, if he could do that, mm -hmm. I wonder what I can do.
For Oprah Winfrey, this early memory was a turning point and ultimately inspiration to produce a new documentary about the man who became her mentor and friend called Sydney. You think of yourself as a colored man. I think of myself as a man. Sidney Poitier was raised on Cat Island in the Bahamas by his parents, who were tomato farmers. The world I knew was quite simple. I didn't know there was such a thing as electricity or that water could come into the house through a pipe. I never thought about what I looked like. I didn't know what a mirror was. Poitier moved to the United States at 15 with no blueprint for the racism he'd face when he arrived. I just go, how did he do it? Mm. How did he, with no role models, with no, with no template before him, and he made a path for all, all of us. us. Oscar-nominated producer Reginald Hudlin directed films including Boomerang, Marshall, and now Sydney. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly as a filmmaker, what did he mean to you? Well, he meant so much to me as a man. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, besides my father, he was the temple of what manhood was. Mm. The intelligence, the courage, the intensity, the discipline, the moral compass. Integrity. We can just rock them all mm. day. Yeah, rock them so all day. many words that sum up the measure of a man. Mm. And that was just kind of in my DNA. I wasn't fully conscious of it until I started making the movie. And I'm like, oh, that's what he means to me. Of course, I know his importance as an actor and how he transformed popular culture on a global basis. I, I knew when he became a filmmaker and he had the most successful black film ever made, you know, Stir Crazy, a record that held for 20 years. I was very conscious Which of that. Which is still one of the funniest mm. things ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. It's one of the funniest things ever. Right, and a guy who is known for being an amazing dramatic actor who turns out to have an amazing talent for comedy. Mm -hmm. The talent and the, and the breadth of skills keep growing and growing and growing. Quincy Jones had a 42nd birthday party for me. Sidney Poitier was there. And I remember going downstairs, turning a corner, and he was just standing there. And I froze because here is my hero. Not everybody gets to meet their heroes. Not everybody does. And most importantly, most of the times when you meet your heroes, your heroes do not measure up. Mm. In this case, he exceeded every measurement I ever could have imagined. How did he make you feel? What he was able to do as you will hear from anybody who's ever known him, is that he made everybody who was in his presence feel like they were the most important person he'd ever been with. And he had a deep curiosity and love of human beings, period, no matter who it was he met. There, you couldn't be out to lunch or dinner with him where he wasn't speaking to the waiter or he wasn't asking to see the chef or going into the kitchen and talking to the people. He had that quality about him that everyone was seen and felt in his presence. But what he made me feel was something, uh, when I met him, was something beyond anything I can even describe in an interview. I mean, I, I believe that we were soulmates. We used to talk about uh, the fact that we certainly had met in another universe at another time. For Sherry, Anika, and Beverly, three of the icon's daughters, he was just dad. For all three of you guys, um, what was it like for you guys as children to see such adoration for your, your father? Were you aware of the magnitude of his impact or was it when you got a little bit older? Okay, I mean, this is going to sound terrible, but, you know, it was very annoying because we couldn't go anywhere. Mm. You know, we would go to Disneyland and people would stop you every you know, a few feet. Oh my mm -hmm. God, oh my God, is that Sidney Poitier? Yeah. So my sister and I, we were in the back and we were really kind of tired of this. Mm -hmm. So this lady said, is that Sidney Poitier? We said, no, people always think that. <laughs> 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 and he heard us and he was livid. Mm -hmm. He said, it is because of women like that and those people that we're here today. Mm -hmm. You don't re disrespect them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was like, oh, okay. I think I knew always what he did, and I knew that because people would constantly say, do you know how lucky you are to have a father that you have? And so I had an idea, but I didn't until I was older have 
any understanding of the impact that he had on so many people? I used to think that he was God mm. because he knew so much. And I would look at him and say, man, how do you know all these things? Really? Mm. He would tell me how many uh, stars there were in, in the sky. Well, who told you? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, he, the way every dinner time, we would sit around the table and just listen to what he had to say because it was fantastic. Um, oh my God, it was wonderful. I would say, we've got to be home for dinner. Wow. Oh yes, had to be home for dinner because I wanted to find out what daddy was gonna talk about. Mm. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I was watching some of his films and re-watching some of his films, particularly Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And I just lost my grandfather. Mm -hmm. He's 90, he was 98 years old. And they were about the same age, they were about three years apart. And my grandfather was a physician. And I remember my grandmother would show me these pictures of my grandfather dressed to the nines, so honorable, so kind. And so I remember watching Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and there's the scene where he's in this suit. And I pulled up a picture of my grandfather at that mm -hmm. same time. Oh. Where he's in a suit. Oh. But I think for me, there were so many men who lived so honorably, black men, and not just necessarily physicians. Mm -hmm. And I thought about perhaps, you know, for the first time he finally was able to see himself projected on the big screen and men like him and there were so many of them um, you know, and they weren't diminished. They weren't devalued. They were able to keep their heads up. We know what that meant. And also for whites to see that on the big screen. Can I, any of you talk about the importance, finally, of seeing that representation? You know, you look at the history of cinema from Birth of a Nation on, all these horrific images that demean and diminish black humanity. Mm. And suddenly, he emerges, fully formed from the very beginning with the intelligence mm. and the intensity and the courage and the class and the elegance and the moral compass, everything that he is. And he makes the right decision every time. He picks everything. the right role. He plays it right. He refuses to do anything that diminishes himself or anyone that looks like him, mm. anyone that he represents. And he does it for decade after decade after decade and he never makes a mistake. It's an impossible achievement. And then when he gets behind the camera, he brings yes. other black people behind in. the camera in. He Open in. the doors. Open the doors for so many others. Right. And I stand here as a grandchild of his, mm. you know, and all my peers today, actors, filmmakers, all of us, we all stand on the shoulders of Sidney Poitier. But it's much bigger than entertainment. Please don't. Oh, we'll get there. Absolutely. Here. Absolutely. You don't have. Barack Obama, if you don't have Sidney Poitier. Mm -hmm. Oprah, you talked about the scene in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner where Sidney's character told his father, let me read this, you think of yourself as a colored man. I think of myself 
as a man. Mm. And you went on to say that defined Sidney Poitier. One of the reasons, one of the multitude of reasons why I have such admiration, love and respect for him is because he came to the United States by the time he was 15 as a fully whole human being. There was no hole to feel in terms of his own identity. Mm -hmm. And one of the, my favorite stories that he tells in the documentary is about not even knowing what color he was or what color was until he was 10 years old because he didn't even know what a mirror was. Mm. He'd never even seen himself in the mirror. And so, as is the case with a lot of people who are raised in all black countries or all black communities where race is not an issue and you literally are defined by the content of your character and the content of his character was established by his parents. I mean, there's nothing you can read or hear or any story that's ever told about him that is not grounded in Reginald and Evelyn Poitier. There's also a part in the documentary that takes us to 1967, 1968, this time of civil unrest. Did he ever talk about what was that like when things are spiraling literally around him and he's this Hollywood star? There's always that question. Do the times make the man or does the man make the times, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, the answer is always a little bit of both. So here, here is this revolutionary force that's transforming Hollywood, that's transforming uh, political activism. He's all these things at once. He's carrying the entire um, uh, uh, transformational moment on his back. Because mm. he's carrying it on his back because he's the one that we see. He's the one that's visible. He's yes. it. And he's willing to take the burden, mm -hmm. right? Which is not a small thing. And he, and he knows he can't just be it on screen. He has to live it in his life. She's doing this. 1967, he's the number one box office star on the planet Earth. He has a triple, uh, three movies that come out in the same year that I don't think anyone has ever matched. To Sir With Love, In the Heat of the Night, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, all in the same year. And at the same time, The Defiant Ones is playing on TV. Hmm. So he owns 1967. He is the symbol of all the transformation, the inflection point in this country. And in 1968, everything changes. We lose Martin Luther King. You know, he has all these you know, terrible losses in his own life. Mm -hmm. He and, and the culture who he's leading now moves ahead of him. But they don't. Because the reality is he has a moral center and he has a value system which is classic which is why it's important to tell the story. When we really say, okay, let's take a look at what this man did from a historical perspective, you go, he was always right. He yeah. was always the leader. And there's so many lessons that today we need to learn from him. Yeah. And, his, and his integrity is inflappable mm -hmm. you, in, and, and infallible. You cannot deny that he has lived the most extraordinary life mm -hmm. because of his value system. It's the way he operated and the way he carried himself. And this sense of elegance and presence that everybody talks about uh, was not an external thing because he didn't view himself as a movie star. He considered himself a man and a father, first mm. and foremost. Did it come with the weight of pressure? I know at times he talked about feeling lonely. It's always hard being the first. When you're the first to do anything, people are coming at you from all sides. And in the case with him, black people are coming against you, white people are coming against you saying, how dare you, how dare you, who do you think you are, who do you think you are? It's one of the reasons he and I connected so well. In our very first meeting, I had a conversation with him about what do you do with all the criticism and trying to be everything for everybody? And he said, my dear, it's challenging when you're carrying other people's dreams. Mm. Mm. Yes. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. 
We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. I do want to sing your mother's praises for a second. Mm. The story that got me, uh, Beverly and Sherry, was when your father bought your mother a mink. And yes. she chose to, you know, take that, return it or what, whatever she mm -hmm. did, but invest it, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. into a raisin in the sun um, and becoming, in fact, the largest investor on Broadway. Mm -hmm. We know how successful it was. We know what it meant to your father. But how about that, even at that time? to invest, well, you, you know, know? When she was at Columbia, before she married Daddy, she was studying accounting. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, she grew up Makes in um, Alabama, Bridgeport, Alabama, and her grandmother was kind of like the, you know, leader of the town because she made sure she found out how to get school buses for the kids so they didn't have to hop the train. Mm. So, I mean, she's, she was always in, involved in that kind of th stuff. She's always involved in, you know, organizations and helping people and NAACP and all that kind of stuff. So that's just who she is. And, you know, today she would do something like that. Well, long before it was a phrase on a t-shirt, he was clearly a loving girl dad. So what do you remember about your dad growing up? Well, I remember we used to travel a lot. Um, we'd be in a hotel room and bored. And so we would dress him up. And we would put makeup on him and do his hair with bows and barrettes. And then we would call room service <laughs> and order food and make him go to the door and answer it. Oh, no. It was just pure fun with his kids. It was just genuine and loving. And he loved to just make us laugh and giggle. I love that. You know, it's funny. You know, I come from a blended family. And the same thing with my father. He wants to make sure that each of us feel his love. And that was so clear with your father as well. Did you feel it even individually? Yes. I had a party. I was 16 or something, and he was in Europe. It was a good party. He's dancing and everything. And around, <laughs> you know, 9 o'clock, 9.30, Mommy says, uh, you have a phone call. And I was like, oh, okay. The party's over. <gasps> what? What? <laughs> from Europe. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, where are you? <laughs> you know? I said, Daddy, it's only 9.30. He said, the party's over. I hung up the phone. I said, he's in Europe. What is he going to know? <laughs> 15 minutes later, I hear people. I was like, I can't catch a break. I mean, no matter where I am, what I do, he's there. He knows what I'm doing, you know. As long as he was around, I was going to be safe. Mm -hmm. You know, I drove from New York to... Texas when I got married the first time and I was scared to go through the south and I told daddy I said I, you know I'm kind of scared to drive down there he said you'll be fine and for me it meant oh he must have hired some people to follow me <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so Lenny Kravitz said this quote and I wrote it down because I liked it it says he came to this earth to move it beyond acting he went on to direct and produce start a production company, and he opened doors for so many others. When you read his biographies, you see, just as in the life of any famous person or pers people who've done great things in the world, most people don't start out, and neither did he, to say, I'm going to do great things mm -hmm. in the world. I'm going to, I'm here in the world to move it and to shake it. I think it is the force of his being 
It is the will of who he decided he was going to be as, as a man that allowed him to do all of the great things. And it is his innate sense of love for himself and love for his family that he was able to exude, that, come, that literally comes from the core truth of who he is and was as a man that we saw expressed in the world. So through his art, we got to see who he was as a man, who he was as a father, who he was as a husband, who he was as a friend. But all of that really, the reason why the love is so deep for him, for me and I think for all who cared for him, is because we know that was real. Mm -hmm. That was real. That wasn't just some external star power people were looking at. That was the real man. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love um, yeah. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. Love you too. <laughs> one life and this is it. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. NBC News, streaming free now. I talked about just losing my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And I remember towards the end knowing that there would be a time where I couldn't just call mm. and he would pick up the phone. And now I miss the, the conversations. Tell me about your day and he would just listen. Um, what do you miss? You yes, know, sorry. I miss him so much now, and I know we all do, but I miss him because of these times. I mean, yes, I used to talk to him talks. every... And then I just feel like he would be able to help all of us sort out these makes sense times. Yes, make some sense of it. So I, yeah. miss, our, I miss our phone calls. Yeah, I do too. You yeah. know, I, I just miss calling or picking up the phone and it's daddy and, you know, we start talking and we talk, you know, quite a long time about different things and, you know, the cosmos as, you know, he was very much into... Yes! yes. <laughs> He was very much into the stars and the yes. planets and what yes. was going on. And he told and me And the one forces time, and the yes, forces. Yes, he said, you know, I think I could just live out my days going into space into, you know, like a spaceship and just live out my days. I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, mm. but. I'd say, let's go. You know, he was <laughs> like, you know. No, he said he was going, Sherry, you're not going. Mm. But. <laughs> <laughs> I think he would. I think he would have actually, you know, taken oh, one of those chances. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he would have done Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. I miss. Oh, it's gonna make me cry. I, I miss hugging him, and sometimes I can still like. There's like a muscle memory. You can still feel the person, even though they're not here. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I miss. I miss. I miss hugging him, and I miss this. You know, he was very silly. <laughs> And, you know, the little, th it's the little things that I miss, you know, the weird exercises he would make up to do to stay healthy, you know, mm -hmm. that were, did nothing for him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I miss talking to him. I still talk to him, but yeah. it's the physicalness, I think, is the hardest for me. Like not being able to go and see him or hold his hand or you know, get that look that everything is going to be okay. Right. You know, it's, calm down, it's fine. <laughs> Those are the things. And Sherry, what about you? His laughter. Oh, oh, oh I yeah. love it. When yeah. he clap his hands and fall oh, out and yes. Oh, my God. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, I just miss 
his laughter. Do you still feel him? Every day. Every day. How often do you think of him? I mean, all the time. How do I not think of him? It's, mm -hmm. you know, he's in everything that I do, you know? He's in my children. I see, like, his laughter. My son has his laugh. It's <laughs> like, you know, he's still so present. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so interesting, Beverly, when you were saying that you had a chance to see the documentary, and even for you as his daughter, to see his life play out. You know, I watched it and I knew all the, I knew the story, I knew all of the things, but it's like you hear people say so often, you know, he changed the world, he made life, you know, places better for everybody, he was so this, he was so that, and I, I kept watching it and, and wanting to recognize or feel what everybody else saw. But he, to me, he's always going to be daddy. Exactly. You know, mm. he's just always going to be daddy. The person who does it the right way, <laughs> who expects you to do it the right way, and the person who wants you to be honest, the person who is making sure that he represents his family well. And I think that he instilled that in us. Did you have to, you know, you're not here by yourself. You can't run around and do stuff and just be insulated. Whatever you do ripples through. So my father is, was a great man. And it was just, watching the movie, it was just like an amen after a sermon. Oh. Well. Wow. <laughs> And I will say that it's a testament to what you guys did because mm -hmm. it is it is the essence of him. You guys mm -hmm. captured the essence of him in the film. And that it's, was the goal. That's such a compliment because that was the goal. That was, yeah. You know, it's... That was the goal. I was hoping to make the final gift mm -hmm. to all of us because he meant everything to all of us, whether you knew it or not. And we can now share some of those amazing lessons we all learned so we can all benefit. You know you made him proud when you hear his daughter say that you captured your, their father. How mm. did that feel? We said from the beginning when we sat down uh, to talk about what we wanted to do. So you all honor us so much with your words because our intention has been fulfilled because the family just told us exactly what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And the intention was an offering he used the word gift, and I said, it's an offering to the world uh -huh. so that the world can come to know him as we do. And so the world can see the best of themselves reflected in the best man I have ever known. He is the best man I have ever known, heard, read about. I, I don't know anybody more extraordinary than Sydney Portier. And a big hello to everybody out there. Welcome to Pop Start Plus. We got a great one for you today. Did you miss the Golden Globes last night? Well, we got you covered. A full recap on everything you need to know. Plus, we're looking back on the beloved show Friends with one of its memorable stars. And we've got a very cool clip we're going to pull out of our vault with the late, great David Bowie, who would have just turned 76. But first, here are today's Pop Start headlines. We're going to start with Prince Harry. The book tour continues for the Duke of Sussex now. Spare is indeed finally out. Last night, he stopped by The Late Show with Stephen Colbert to discuss the many dramatic headlines coming from the memoir. But ending their conversation on a bit of a lighter note, Harry answered the question some people have been wondering about, and that's his Netflix binging history. Uh, you watched The Crown, right? You've got to have watched some of The Crown, right? <laughs> people love it. Yes, I have actually watched The Crown. Oh, yeah. Well, the recent know, it, stuff or, or the, the, the older stuff? Uh, the older stuff and the more recent stuff. Yeah. Um, Do you fact check it while you watch it? <laughs> Um, mm. 
<laughs> yes, I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, Foo Fighters. It's been a tough year for the Rock and Roll Hall of Famers following the loss of beloved drummer Taylor Hawkins back in March. But now they're getting ready to kick off the next chapter for the band. Yesterday, the Foo's announcing a set of headlining shows. Uh, the first set since Hawkins' passing. It'll be happening in May and June. They'll hit a couple festivals in Ohio, uh, also Boston, and they're going to do Bonnaroo oh. in Tennessee. The announcement comes not long after a reflective social media post they put out on New Year's Eve where the band teased plans for the new year writing. Without Taylor, we know that we're going to be a different band going forward. And we know that when we see you again, and we will soon, he'll be there in spirit with all of us every night. Good to see the food's getting back out. Next up, Leslie Jordan, the late yeah. comedian, is going to soon be celebrated in the biggest stage in Nashville, the Grand Old Opry. On Sunday, February 19th, Jordan's celebrity friends are set to honor his legacy with a show called Reporting for Duty, a tribute to Leslie Jordan. The Opry website described the special night as an intimate collection of performances and onstage storytelling with insights into some of Jordan's lasting lessons of a life well lived. Take a look at the roster of who's going to be swinging by. Performers include Eddie Vedder, Marin Morris, and the Brothers Osborne, plus appearances by Jim Parsons, Mayim Bialik, and Margaret Cho. There are, is a pre-sale dropping tickets tomorrow, but of course they officially go on sale on Friday. And finally, Ben Affleck, the star's legendary love of Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> just hit a whole new level. He's always photographed with a little Dunkin' coffee. Mm. Tuesday, Ben was spotted serving cups of the New England brew at Medford, Massachusetts mm. drive through Lucky patrons pulled up to the window to find the Oscar winner delivering their orders. <laughs> NBC News Boston reporting that customers were told that he was filming a commercial. One noted that the Dunk's new celebrity employee was very nice, very funny and quick-witted, <laughs> and of course, uh, by Ben's side was wife Jennifer Lopez, a video on social media showing uh, them inside that store where Ben Affleck is holding onto an apron. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there is more to know. It is Popstar Plus, after all. First up, Ghostbusters. This one's for you, Uncle Al. Big news from one of the original cast members, Mr. Ernie Hudson, yesterday stopped by the Kelly Clarkson show and told guest host Niecy Nash about plans for the next chapter of the franchise. Yeah, yeah, you know, there there will be another Ghostbusters. Hey! That, that I can definitely say. You know, the, the last Ghostbusters was very, thanks to all the fans, they loved it, and now we'll be making another Ghostbusters. I love right? that. I love that. And I'm happy to say that um, Winston, the character I play, is now a billionaire, so he has a, has a little bit more freedom. Love that. That's great news. Finally, Bob Odenkirk. Better Call Saul may be over, but Odenkirk fans can rejoice. You won't have to wait too long for the Emmy-winning actor's return to the small screen. He is set to lead a new series on AMC+. Plus. It's called Lucky Hank, about a man going through a midlife crisis, and it does come from the same executive producer as Breaking Bad and Saul. Here's a look at the first teaser. I've always been a difficult man. I specialize in minor strife and insignificant irritation. That's my lane. Lucky Hank starts streaming in March. That's going to be great. Still to come, the highlights from last night's big Golden Globes, all the big moments and winners right after this. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Yeah. I love you, too. <laughs> Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now.
And welcome back. The Golden Globes returned last night. Our buddy Jason Kennedy was up late on the red carpet for us with a great carpet with a recap of all the glitz, glamour, and winners. There certainly was an elephant in the room at last night's Golden Globes, but overall, the mood was one of celebration as Hollywood honored the best of TV and film. Overnight at the 80th Golden Globes, Mr. Spielberg, step right up here. Steven Spielberg captured two globes for his work on The Fablemans. The film, inspired by his own childhood, won Best Picture Drama and Best Director. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out when I could tell that story, and I figured out when I turned about 74 years old, I said, you better do it now. It was also a big night for the Banshees of Inishirin, the film corralling three awards, including Best Musical or Comedy and Best Screenplay. Last year's show was not televised following an explosive Los Angeles Times report exposing the lack of diversity among members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association and alleged ethical lapses. Settle, settle, settle. First time host Gerard Carmichael kicked off the show with an understated start, but didn't mince words when addressing the controversy. I won't say they were a racist organization, but they didn't have a single black member until George Floyd died. Still, the show looked to rebound from its troubled past. Well, we're just going to keep the black girl magic going. Quinta, get up here, girl! As actors of color took home many of the night's top prizes. Everything Everywhere All at Once is Kiwe Kwan and Wakanda Forever's Angela Bassett were awarded for their supporting performances. Bassett paying tribute to her late co-star in the franchise, Chadwick Boseman. We were surrounded each and every day by the light and the spirit of Chadwick Boseman. And veteran actress Michelle Yeoh clinched her first Globe win for her mind-blowing lead role in the sci-fi comedy Everything Everywhere All at Once. This is also for all the shoulders that I've stand on, all who came before me, who looks like me, and all who are going on this journey with me forward. While Jennifer Coolidge checked in her first globe, thanking the White Lotus's creator. You sort of changed my life in a million different ways, and my neighbors are speaking to me, things like that. The top prize for best actor in a motion picture drama went to Austin Butler for his rockin' performance in the Elvis biopic. And the Presley family, thank you guys. Thank you for opening your hearts. Your, your memories, your home to me. Eddie Murphy accepted the Cecil B. DeMille Award and gave others his so-called blueprint for success. Pay your taxes. <laughs> mind your business. And keep Will Smith's wife's name. Oh, people were loving that. On the TV side, Abbott Elementary won Best Comedy. House of the Dragon took Best Drama. Kevin Costner won Best Actor for Yellowstone, but couldn't make it because of the extreme weather. It led to another highlight of the night when Regina Hall, who accepted the award on his behalf, didn't buy his absence and what became this tongue-in-cheek moment, but then clarified he had to shelter in place in Santa Barbara, saying, let's pray, everyone. Some laughed, <laughs> some didn't. Check out this next conversation right here on Popstar Plus. Award season is back, and the stars showed up in looks to match the festive occasion. You ever just geek out thinking about all the cool stuff you get to do? I am geeking out quite a lot. <laughs> there was glitz and glamour. Getting to be around uh, all these other artists that I admire so much, and I just feel very grateful. With the biggest names in film and television serving up some major sparkle. It felt like it was time to sparkle a little. Angela Bassett won for her big screen performance and her look. With chilly weather in Los Angeles, some accessorized with gloves and capes. Valentino cape at Neiman's. Others bared the cold and bared some skin. Atelier Versace, and it's designed by Donatella, and I just love it so much. Jenna Ortega spilled her secret to style success. My fingers are a bit too slim, so I wear tape underneath my rings. That is a secret. It's not a secret anymore. Jewel tone gowns made these leading ladies look like queens. But for others, purple reigns supreme. This is actually heliotrope. I am that so sorry. Would be aubergine. Purple is the color. It's royalty. It's regal. Couture perfection in pretty pastels and creams adorned with flowing ruffles and jewels. These frocks prove black is always a classic. It really gives me like kind of a Grace Kelly thing. The men looked dapper too. I think you look phenomenal. Wearing tuxedos in every shade of the rainbow. You and I got the memo. Yes, we did. We clean up well. And plenty of velvet. 
some accessorizing their suits with some flair. You gotta get some shine. Henry Winkler used his fashion as a good luck charm. My son, Jed, said, do not wear the same tie you wore when you lost last time. So I chose another one. And Billy Porter proved once again he's in a class of his own. Hollywood's A-list earning high marks for fashion, setting the bar for the first award show carpet catwalk of the season. Al Roker, it's Niecy Nash Betts and Jessica Betts, and we want to say welcome back. I just want to give a big shout to Al Roker. I knew you would make it. You're my guy. You're my OG. Peace out to you, baby. Al is back. America is so happy that you are there. Al Roker, I'm talking to you, and I'm glad you're feeling better, because I was scared. Al, you're my pal. Oh, glad you're back. We depend on you. Mm, uh, you're here. Oh, my space. God. You got wow. friends everywhere. Wow. Yikes. Man. So was that, Al, you're usually on that red carpet. I know, usually, I know, I miss sure that. They're missing you, oh too. Oh, my gosh, that was fantastic. Oh, we the Fonz. Come on. Steven Spielberg. Look at Jesse you. Nash. I mean, right. and I, now i got People yeah, Magazine. I'm just That's right. Shirley some... Ralph. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more. You're on the okay, cover of People. That's a bit too much now. <laughs> no, this is really a cool article that you talk about your journal, your journey and everything that you've been through. Just... Uh, Big shout out to your family and to yeah. Deborah. Yeah. Must feel kind of surreal. And doctors and, and all of you, you know. How, how's it been? We haven't had a chance to check it's, back it's in a little good, bit. It's been good, you know. I mean, yeah. really, it's it's like nice being back. It's nice getting dressed. Yeah. <laughs> smelling nice. Wearing <laughs> pants. <laughs> wearing pants with zippers, you know. Do you get a real the nice folks out there? Yeah. Yeah. Do you get a real sense of what a national treasure you yeah. are? I ask that yes, because I should be everywhere fair. I go or we go, yes. it is what everybody asks. Yeah. How's Al? How's I can't yeah. imagine what it's like for you. You know, uh, it's special. It really is. You know, you you do feel the love. Usually, you get this after you're dead. <laughs> so, but maybe I am, and no. this is just all part of my hell. No. I but I know this is heaven. Believe me. But you always say it's like he pointed at the crew and said, "Love is a healer. The prayers are a yeah. healer." Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. I was getting off a plane yesterday. The, the, the pilot. Everybody. The pilot. The pilot, the pilot I'm getting off. He said, "Hey." How's Al? Yeah. Everybody. Oh. Like, huh? We're clear to land on 22. Let's hide Al Roker. <laughs> right. well, By the way, that People magazine, yeah. it's on newsstands nationwide yeah. on Friday in Los Angeles and here in New yeah. York today. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. After the break, we're going to hear from the actress who played Janice on Friends, sharing the inspiration behind the character's unforgettable voice. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. <laughs> begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens wherever you are nbc news streaming free now this is what it looks and feels the storm zone the bigger piece of the puzzle comes new numbers just out this morning good evening we begin tonight with breaking news just coming in we begin this hour with the latest developments we're coming on the air with some shake-ups big time on capitol hill how much water ultimately will be forced inland Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. The, latest film. the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. And we're back here on Popstar Plus. Could Janice's laugh be any more memorable? Maggie Wheeler gave voice to the Friends character throughout the show's 10 seasons. 
And for our flashback series today, she told us what it was like to work with Matthew Perry and bringing her character to life. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. You, you wish, wish Chandler, Chandler Bing. Bing. You are looking at a married lady now. You are looking at a married lady now. Oh. Janice is loving and um, slightly unaware. <laughs> Uh, she doesn't really know what people are saying about her behind her back, but she always assumes the best in people, and uh, I love her. Hello! <laughs> the inspiration for Janice's voice really came from the writing. When I saw that first audition scene and, and she said, I, oh, I bought you these socks, mix and match, moose and squirrel. Well, I knew you had the Rockies, and so I figured, you know, you could wear Bullwinkle and Bullwinkle, or you could wear Rocky and Rocky, or you can mix and match. Moose and squirrel, <laughs> whatever you want. Really, I heard her. I knew who she was to me. You can never be sure if whoever is casting or the producers are going to be thinking the same way, but for me, I knew who I wanted to play. And, uh, and so that's what I did. And then the laugh was born on set, working with Matthew because he's too darn funny and I knew I was gonna laugh. And I thought, well, this character better have a good laugh because Matthew's likely to crack me up more than once. Night, night, bing a -ling. Night, night, Janice. <laughs> I loved everything about Chandler's relationship with Janice because it was great fodder for comedy. So, you know, he didn't make Janice very happy. He was constantly uh, disappointing her. But for me as an actor, you know, I just absolutely loved opening the script when it came to my door and just finding out yet again what were they going to do with Janice and Chandler, what was going to go wrong with them, and what was going to go right with them. Oh, my God. Oh. My. God. <laughs> oh. Working with Matthew was extraordinary. He's incredibly funny. His timing is amazing. He's very generous on set. He's just a wonderful actor to work with. And really, the entire cast of Friends is as, as wonderful as you imagine them to be. We had a great time working together, and, uh, and everybody was incredibly wel welcoming to me. And, uh, and it was just a great environment in which to make comedy. I have very wonderful fond memories of playing this character and I have many favorite moments. Uh, having to say goodbye to Chandler in the airport, 15 Yemen Road, Yemen writing his address down and knowing that I was going to write him where he actually wasn't going, uh, that was a high moment. I'll write you every day. 15 Yemen Road, Yemen. I happen to love the Valentine's episode. Happy Valentine's Day. Where they get set up on a blind date uh, at, at the restaurant and she tells him that she's cut his head out of every picture that she has of the two of them and he can use them as puppets in his theater of cruelty. By the way, Chandler, I cut you out of all my pictures. So if you want, I have a bag with just your heads. <laughs> That's another big favorite moment. And of course, uh, you know, giving birth with Jennifer and with Rachel in, 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 uh, in the labor room. It's you. This is yours. What? <laughs> ah, look how nervous he gets. We haven't slept together in years. <laughs> I get approached by fans fairly frequently because Friends is now, you know, it, it already had an incredible fan base and now there are kids watching it. Netflix, you know, has brought friends to so many more millions of people. So I get stopped all over the place by people of every age and every nationality. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing how many people love this show. Fans come up to me and they say, You love me, Chandler Bing. You just don't know you love me. You want me. You need me. You can't live without me. And you know it. 
you just don't know you know it. Where would Janice be today? Let's see. Uh, I think that uh, if her kids are out of the house, I think she's probably designing a line of clothing, some leopard print clothing. Why not? And, you know, I do. I think she's got a relationship advice blog and that she's just giving a lot of wonderful advice. She had a lot of experiences, good and bad, and I think she's got lots to offer. I think that Friends is, in a strange way, this wonderful, universal uh, uh, experience of, of watching people grow up, of watching people, uh, you know, manage conflict and disappointment and success and romance and, uh, and friendship. So, uh, and I just think that the writing is so funny. It endures and it endures year after year. Who doesn't love a good friend's flashback moment? I know you do. Coming up, speaking of flashing back, we're going to honor a true legend. We've got an awesome clip we're yanking from our vault featuring the one and only David Bowie. That's next. NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece to the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. This past weekend would have been the late, great David Bowie's 76th birthday. And yesterday marked six years since his passing. We thought we'd remember him through this clip when he stopped by the Today Show back in 1992 to talk about his music and also his acting career. David Bowie, good morning. Good morning. A screen kiss to start <laughs> the day. Well, not a bad way to start. David Bowie is Monty uh, with Roseanne Arquette. I, before we get into the plot about this this uh, film, I understand you lobbied for a role in it. How come? I was crazy for it, and I li I love the script. I thought it was uh, really one of the funniest scripts I'd read in a long time. The script. But, uh, funnily enough, the way that it's transpired, it, it it it's more of a light comedy than an all-out belly laugh type movie. Yeah. But it's uh, it's quite delightful. It gave me a chance to to do something like that, to not be a Martian, but I still get to wear aluminum shirts. <laughs> well, we're getting, ahead, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, you're alluding to the fact that Hollywood always, I shouldn't say always, Hollywood likes to typecast you as either a, an alien or somebody with emotional problems, somebody who's a little strange. Yeah, really. I've had, a, I had a, an awful lot of that for the first few years, although over the last couple of years, things have changed. I, it, and ironically enough, there have been films that I've actually turned down because I didn't want to do them. At the risk of oversimplification, Linguini incident has has you as uh, Monty, a somewhat mysterious character who's uh, a young Englishman who's laid a bet with various people to marry one of the waitresses in this particular restaurant. Yeah. But Do you did you like Monty, or is that essential to portraying him correctly? I, I liked his lines. <laughs> I like the lines. I'm not very good at the deep inner conflict stuff, you know. Why not? I, it would seem I, that you not... would be. Well, I have my own to contend with, <laughs> so I guess that all, all I do, I just shove that onto the role and it just becomes part of the role. Does David Bowie get in the way of, of, of playing the role any more difficult David than... David Bowie is a real complex guy. <laughs> well, he is, with musical uh, terms at all times. I don't know. I spent a few, two or three days with the director, obviously, uh, during uh, uh, pre-shoot, and, and by the t I hope that by the time 
we get to actually shooting uh, preconceptions about me, if, uh, if there are any, which I just don't believe, um, it's pretty much broken down, I hope. The, the director, Richard Shepard, said he can't understand why you've never been cast in a romantic lead before. Can you? It's my teeth. <laughs> it's my teeth. I have an English dentist, uh, <laughs> English dentistry background. But there are you, English you films. Have to have, you have, yes, <laughs> but we, we've forgotten how to make straightforward romances. This is um, your first comedy. Yes. Well, some people wouldn't agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's put it, let me rephrase that. You never saw Just a Gigolo. <laughs> this, this is the first film you're, you are in that is billed as a comedy. Yeah, that's right, yeah. The, the film is, is offbeat. Let's take a, an, another look at an example of, of, of the kind of comedy you were talking about. Uh, in this scene, I think breakfast is served. Morning, I'm Monty. I'm Viv, pleased to meet you. What are you lovely ladies burning this morning, little pillows? Marshmallows. Marshmallows. There's another hanger in the closet if you care to join us. Uh, breakfast off, then. This is breakfast. What's the matter, don't you like marshmallows? I don't think I've ever had one. Are they in one of the four basic food groups? They're in the white group. <laughs> I'll get a hanger immediately. Boom, boom. Uh -huh. <laughs> in addition Shall I sing that? No, 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 no. the white group. <laughs> the white group, not to be confused with Tin Machine, which is, which is uh, the newest band you're working with. You're still working as a solo artist. Yeah. It, which has priority these days, your acting career or your music career? Oh, music always. Really? Absolutely, yeah. That's never going to change? No. No, I love, I live, I live, I really do. Cliché coming up, I live for my music. It's something I just cannot stop doing. Every morning I can wake up and feel like I'm the luckiest guy alive doing what I do. I, lo I love working in that kind of abandoned situation where it really sort of, I mean, it's like any art form is like, it's like uh, flying a plane which crashes in flames. You just get up and walk away from it. Nobody is injured. You can afford to make mistakes. You can afford to do that kind of thing. You can survive wrecks in the entertainment business? And you can survive wrecks. <laughs> yeah, I've worked with enough. Final notice, I suspect most folks know by now, you're getting married in the morning, not quite the morning, but uh, uh, come the summer. Early July. Yeah, yeah. early July yeah. to Iman. Yeah. Um, excited, nervous? Terribly, terribly. Not nervous, excited. Very excited. I mean, it's been a long time for me since uh, I've been married. But, uh, <laughs> but what? I don't know, I didn't say but. Oh, well, I, I was just providing you with a lead-off line, but. <laughs> Pick it up and run with it, will you? <laughs> David Bowie, good luck with it. Thank you very much indeed. Congratulations, take care. Wow, always really cool to see and hear from David Bowie like that. All right, people, that's going to do it. Thanks for joining us for another Popstar Plus. We appreciate it. Of course, we'll have more great stuff for you tomorrow. We'll see you then. Nutritionist Joy Bauer has two hearty slow cooker recipes that you can set it and forget it. Hey guys, it's no secret that I am in love with my slow cooker. And if you're like me, you are really going to enjoy these recipes. The first one is eggplant parmesan. So I'm starting with two large eggplants. I'm just going to trim and then I'm going to slice them into about half inch rounds. I have paper towels lining a baking sheet here. We're going to salt the tops to help draw out some of the bitter water. And this is also gonna help our eggplant slices to keep their form within the slow cooker. So these need to sit 30 to 60 minutes. And while we're waiting, we're gonna head over to the stove to make our garlicky walnut breadcrumbs. So first I'm adding 
one cup of whole grain panko breadcrumbs, one cup of crushed walnuts. And I saute this for about 10 minutes on a medium flame. And I'm gonna add in some garlic, some dried basil, and some black pepper. I'm gonna take this off the heat, and we're gonna mix in some parm. I'm gonna take you back to our eggplant now. I'm gonna press down with paper towels onto my eggplants, which have been sitting because I'm sopping up a lot of the excess water. I'm gonna season up our slices with some garlic, oregano, and a little bit of black pepper. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of tomato sauce to line the bottom. And now the fun part starts. You line the bottom of your slow cooker, then for your garlicky walnut breadcrumbs, more sauce, I've got part skim mozzarella cheese, calcium protein, and of course, cheesy goodness. And you're gonna repeat the same exact thing with two more layers. So you have three luscious layers in total. And now for the easiest part. Put on the lid and cook it on high for about three hours and 30 minutes. Guys, this is so good. And now we're gonna mix things up I'm gonna take you over to my island and we're going to make a salsa verde chicken chili. And I'm starting with butternut squash. And butternut is packed with potassium. It's got beta carotene, great for your immune system and so many other nutrients. Some onion, of course, a green bell pepper, finely diced. And this is a jalapeno. So this chili is customizable to whatever spice you want. And now I'm adding salsa verde. And this is reduced sodium chicken broth. Gonna mix this around and I'm adding in loads of spices. And I'm gonna mix this around again, all the flavors, get them nice and well combined. And you're gonna add in two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I'm submerging the chicken into the liquid, put the cover on, and let it cook on high for about four hours. 30 minutes before it's done cooking, carefully take out all of the chicken breasts, then add in two cans of rinsed and drained beans. Stir the beans, put the top on, let everything simmer, and while that's simmering, you're gonna shred your chicken. Then put the chicken back into the slow cooker, stir everything together so the chicken can sop up all of that scrumptious liquid. Oh my goodness, guys, this is so yummy. The flavors all complement each other. Mm, this will definitely warm your soul this weekend. That Yum. is good, yeah, all right. Slow out. Uh, for these recipes and so much more, go to today.com slash food. Joy Bauer is featuring some of Laura's favorite foods. What I a great this. time. Yes. This All is, right. This is going to be great. So we each have a food, and we're starting with apples, which apples, I've never... Apples, and I love that you love apples. First, apple is like the ultimate superfood because it's perfectly portioned, it's totable, it's naturally sweet, and in the skin of the apple is a, a type of fiber that's called pectin, which helps to lower our cholesterol. Awesome. So mm -hmm. how do you do it? So you're so, making a frittata? Uh, yeah, so I wanted to do something, you know, a little bit different for you and show you a new fuss-free recipe that you can make at home. Exciting. So we're making an apple, sausage, and caramelized onion frittata. Sound good? Oh, <laughs> sounds delicious. Okay, so here what I've done is I, I took a Granny Smith apple because for this recipe, I love the tart flavor, mm. and I sauteed it with Enjoy some it. onion. Then I'm adding in, this is an apple right. and poultry four. breakfast sausage. Okay. It's, it's one of the pre-cooked, mm -hmm. and you add it, hold on yeah. to this, Jill. I can't believe this is Joy approved yes. with all this. And right? this is a combination of whole eggs and egg whites with a little bit of fresh thyme and a little bit of dry mustard because it gives yeah. it that real oh, savory nice. taste. Okay. And oh how's about, before we put this in the oven, mm -hmm. all we're gonna do is top it with a little bit of grated, shredded cheddar in the oven on 400 for about 15 There's to 17 nice minutes. That. And that's mm -hmm. it. Isn't that great? It's phenomenal. Oh Do you like it? Yeah, delicious. It's I can delicious. eat that all day long. It is. So here's my challenge. You're going to make that nice this week, and you're going to tag me on Instagram. I want to see that you made it. <laughs> you got a nice kind of Asian flair here. So the next food is chicken. And I love that you picked chicken because it's 
busting with protein, which helps to maintain our metabolisms mm -hmm. and our muscle mass. So that's great. But I think a lot of people get caught up with the same old boring chicken recipe right. over and over. So I thought we would tackle a big popular one, Chinese chicken and broccoli. Do you Ooh. like that? Ooh, Ooh, who doesn't? Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is, um, it's all about the sauce. This is so simple. It's a rice vinegar with a little bit of reduced sodium soy sauce mm -hmm. and some ginger and garlic. And I put in a drop of either arrowroot or cornstarch mm -hmm. just so it will thicken it up. You saute the broccoli. Let's right. make believe we saute it for about three minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grab this. We pour the remainder of the sauce in there. Okay. And while Thank this you. is sauteing, the sauce is gonna start to really thicken up. Mm -hmm. And once Thank the broccoli you. gets mm -hmm. softened, you add in your chicken and that's it, guys. That so is it. That's brown. it. That's it. Yes, I had already browned the chicken. Phenomenal. Okay. Yeah, is that easy? Time. Is, is that, that amazing? amazing? Okay, before we run out of time. So this last yeah. one is a little bit kooky, delicious. but bear with me because mm -hmm. it is insanely delicious. Okay. Do you like pie a la mode? I'm still eating sure. this. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna make we're gonna make a roasted sweet potato a la mode, and it just works. So mm -hmm. sweet potatoes are busting with beta carotene. All right. I oven roasted this. We're gonna slice it in half. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna become the base of your pie. Oh. You shred this inside, oh. but you're gonna keep the skin intact. And then, this is a special spice blend. It's a combination of all the wintry, cozy spices. Mm -hmm. We have ginger, nutmeg, uh, cinnamon. Almost like sweet potato pie. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's what we're basically making yeah. here. Oh, wow. And awesome. So yeah. then, what are you gonna do with this? You're gonna top it with ice a cream. scoop of light ice, ice cream. cream. Mm -hmm. And just to bring it on home, oh. this is a salt and maple infused toasted pecans oh, that you top it on top. You have to try this, guys. That's amazing. Put on. Eat it with a, oh. Here, oh, it's in there. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's amazing. I, we gave, I gave you guys bite-sized pieces thank going you. for this. That is terrific. Is that great? That's amazing. Uh, Joy and Laura, thank you so very much. Mm. Happy New Year. Congratulations. It's going to be a great New Year for you. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Oh. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer remixing boring lunch sandwiches with two tasty wraps. Oh, Joy. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm celebrating the weekend with two deliciously healthy wraps, a chicken Caesar wrap and a caprese Caesar wrap. So the common theme here is my lightened up creamy Caesar dressing with a surprising ingredient, and that would be an avocado. So I'm gonna pop all of this right into a blender. Next, some Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and garlic. W sauce, some lemon juice, Dijon mustard for some tang, and then optional anchovy paste. And last but not least, six tablespoons of water. And we're gonna whirl this up in a blender. You can see how creamy this is. It tastes just like the real deal but for a fraction of the calories. This is just 20 calories per tablespoon, so you can feel good about using a lot. Now for the build, starting with a chicken Caesar salad. I'm adding crunchy romaine lettuce together with some 
grated Parmesan cheese, and some sliced cooked chicken with some of our homemade Caesar dressing. Stir this all up and lay out a tortilla that fits your eating style. I have whole wheat tortilla, but it can be gluten-free, low carb, anything goes. Spread on some of our Caesar dressing right on the tortilla. It's got a nice green color from the avocado. I think that adds personality and fun. And add in the yummy filling. Tuck in the sides. And then you roll it right up. It's so simple, it's so delicious, and every bite is packed with protein, fiber, and tons of flavor. Next up, a Caprese Caesar wrap if you feel like going meat-free. This time I'm using a tomato-themed tortilla. I'm putting on some of my creamy Caesar, spreading it out and simply layering irresistible calcium-packed mozzarella cheese, juicy vitamin C-filled and lycopene-filled tomatoes, and of course, some fragrant aromatic basil leaves. Tuck in the sides and roll this right up. How easy was that? This is so good. Whether you choose to make a chicken Caesar or a Caprese Caesar, that's a wrap. <laughs> nice. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. I'm sure you've seen videos of people making these butter boards all over your feed. So, of course, you know, everyone wants to try it. And today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is here. But you have a special spin on it. At first, I was like, okay, no way you're making a butter board. <laughs> and I was right. This, is, this first one is a little bit more of a Mediterranean board. Yeah, I think you're going to love this. So we're putting a healthy spin on the trend. And this first one, to your point, I'm calling a Mediterranean hummus board, and it's starting with hummus. So here I have two cups of hummus, and it can either be store-bought or if you're super motivated, you could make your own. And then you spread it out onto a board. Now, my board is about 19 inches. So if you want to scale this down, it's very easy to just use a smaller amount of hummus and you can make a single portion or maybe split between two people. But I love this because you could also bring it to a host that's mm -hmm. having a party. I mean, it's like, it's a big statement, right? And you see how easy Already it is to just spread it out. Make it there. Well, you could do either, Al, because I'm going to show you how Lickety Split this comes together. So after it's spread, now you're going to add all of these yummy toppings. So I have here some smoky paprika because I just love the taste of that. And I'm adding, these are just canned sliced black olives mm. over the top. So the idea is we're building all of these layers of yummy, nutritious Mediterranean goodies. And now we have some chopped um, onion, and now I'm going to put on a lot of greens. Here I'm doing chives and I'm doing some scallions, but you could do cilantro or parsley, oh, really anything great. goes. And then lastly, to top it off, and Al, this I would do when you get there to yeah. the party. A little bit of extra virgin olive oh, oil, okay. and then you just surround it with sturdy scoopers. So I have, I love sturdy using... Scoopers. <laughs> yeah, because you, you don't want them to droop. So yeah. I have here I a lot of sliced cucumbers okay. and, of course, some whole grain crackers. Okay. And I also have um, oh, yeah. warm That'd be good. Ooh, on Endive spears. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, this is great over here. And, guys, look at these, like, I mean, bell peppers. I got large bell peppers, but also the little baby bellas. Yeah. And you could put that all over. And you've got this gorgeous, gorgeous, colorful bowl That's that awesome. just came together in a couple of and, minutes. And then I love this one. And now Joy, you've got a, a sweet board. Oh, I'm really excited to share this <laughs> one with you. So we're taking a very different direction here and we're gonna do an addictively sweet dessert bowl. Mm. And dessert bowl. It's a spread or it could be a board. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a pumpkin peanut butter. We're leveling mm. up peanut butter, which already has a lot of heart healthy fat. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is I'm adding equal parts. So this is about half a cup of creamy peanut butter. If uh. there's nut allergies in the house, you could swap in any other nut butter. And this is 100% um, pumpkin puree okay. oh, and I add this yeah. together now I'm gonna it. sweet sweeten it up because it is a dessert I just I'm gonna put it over thinking they would roll some in but that didn't happen <laughs> I <laughs> wish a little bit of 
That's maple syrup. You could also use brown sugar, or if you want to go in a no added sugar direction, uh -huh. you could certainly use one of the stevia or the monk fruit mm -hmm. blends. Could you use a little honey? And then, yeah, honey would be good too. You could absolutely use honey. Enjoy the yeah. yes. And then, you know what? I tried it with honey. It, uh -huh. To me, um, I preferred the maple syrup, and okay. I also preferred okay. the um, brown it's your, sugar. It's your but recipe. You do honey. you. <laughs> yeah, but other, you could absolutely use honey for honey lovers, for sure. Yeah. So you keep stirring. This is nice and smooth. Now, let me show you what it looks good. like. You're going to love it. And over here, mm, I've that. loaded up my board with, um, again, sturdy scoopers. Oh, so here we have scoopers. apple slices. Yes, Pears. It's pear season, so I have pears graham and crackers. also graham crackers. Oh, we gotta go for the graham I'm crackers. I'm making this as a snack for my kids today. Nice. All right, thank you. Thank, so, thank you, Joy. Is so good. Thank you so much. Very, nice. Very doable. I gotta get some pumpkin. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bowers here to show us not one, but two recipes that are flat out <laughs> delicious. Joy, good to see you. Good morning. Happy fall. Good to see you guys, and I love that flat out. And that makes perfect sense because our first recipe is scarpaccia, which is really a savory zucchini flatbread, and it sort of combines three carby favorites, cornbread, a tart, and focaccio, Ooh. all wrapped up in one. And I think you guys are going to love it. Okay. And the first thing that I did was, now, it's zucchini is really a summer veggie, but you can get it through the end of September, and, and it tends to be readily available year-round as well. So we're going to kind of just for today call it a fall veggie as well. So I took... I, Sliced it very thin. So these are two small zucchini and an onion. And I, I'm showing you this because before we get started, I sauteed them and made them nice and soft. Can you see that? Yeah, and I got yeah. all of the water out. We're just going to set this aside now, and I'm going to make the batter. So normally you make a regular flour when, when um, creating a scarpaccia, but I'm going to make this gluten-free and ensure that it has a whole lot of protein and fiber. So this is an almond flour, and I packed it. So you know that it has a lot of, again, gluten-free protein as well as fiber. A little bit of cornmeal. So this is where the cornbread comes in. Okay. One egg, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some salt, Joy, and one... Flour, or, Joy, sorry. Does almond flour taste different? So it, it has a little bit of a sweet, nutty flavor. Um, it's really lovely. It doesn't mm -hmm. work in all recipes, but it works beautifully in this one. Okay. And I also added one cup of water, and that's going to be your batter. And you just okay. mix this whole entire thing together. 
And then I'm going to add in those veggies that I sauteed. And you can sort of see, yeah, so I'm adding those in. And now you know that every single bite is going to have a juicy, action-packed veggie. And you see that I also put in sliced cherry tomatoes because this is going to be a wonderful pop of color when you see the finished. Hold on a minute. And how long do you bake that, Josh? So I line my casserole dish. This is a 9 by 13 with parchment paper because I'm going to show you how easy it is to lift it out. And I pop it in the oven at 400 degrees for anywhere from 50 to 60 minutes. Now, the inside is super duper moist and the top has like this crispy top finish. Can you see this? And you can see how easy it was to lift it out. And there it is. And guys, it is great for breakfast with some scrambled yeah. eggs. You could have it with lunch with a colorful salad. Or for dinner, you could have it as a side. Or you could have it as a snack yeah. any time of the day. Joy, so basically eat it all day long. We've got, we've got about two minutes left for the chocolate grape bar. Yum. Okay. So this I love. I love grapes. And obviously I love chocolate. And I thought, why not make a bark bejeweled with bejeweled. juicy, nutrient-rich okay grapes and there's only two ingredients of this and it worked brilliantly so the first thing i did was melted some semi-sweet or dark chocolate chips oh guys look at this Mm. whoa i know that's just (laughs) the chips melted just the chips melted and you can use a double boiler or take the easy way out like i did and i just melt them right in the microwave oh and so pour it over your baking sheet. Again, I'm all about the parchment paper this This morning. That's a great idea because it's easy. And then you have your grapes. And what I love about grapes, the skins have resveratrol, which is a plant compound that could help reduce the risk for certain diseases. It's Mm. so good for us. And uh, I use two different colors for a pop and you slice them in half or quarters and you put them all over on top. And all you then need to do is you pop this right into either the freezer or the fridge. Okay. And look at this, guys. The chocolate yeah. firms up, hmm. and you have these amazing pieces of bark. Great and it looks bark. like in this picture that the grapes are just sitting on top, but they're actually pressed within yeah. the chocolate, like yeah. I'll show you. Great. See, they Joy. don't fall oh, off. Okay. Joy, I've thank you. Thank you so much, Joy. Have a Yum. great weekend. It looks delicious. For the recipes, you guys. Thank bye-bye. You. For the recipes, folks, as yeah. always, it's today.com slash food. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. (laughs) This is what it looks and feels. The storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is celebrating by making cinnamon sugar donut holes. Yum. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Oh, my gosh. We are making bite-sized delights that are crazy good. And they're only 40 calories a pop. They are super simple to prep. Yes. And it's like the perfect way to satisfy a sweet tooth without going overboard. And because they're only 40 calories a pop, I'm saying a serving is three or four, and that's good because they are addictive. And you say you only (laughs) need two ingredients? So there's only two ingredients plus water for the batter. And here it is. So I'm taking a standard box cake mix, either yellow or white vanilla. And I just put it in my mixing bowl. Um, 
I tried it with both. I, I actually think it's just, you know, equally delicious. Okay. So, you know, whatever you have on hand or whatever's on sale. Okay. And next I have, um, so this is one cup of unsweetened applesauce. And okay. you can use a plain flavored or a cinnamon, eater's choice. Nice. And then just one cup of water. Wait, so I'm this adding is life changing. This in. So you don't need the okay, oil and the egg it. that you normally add to the cake mix? Nothing. What? You just mix this up and it's going to whip into this luxurious this batter. Is amazing. And then you take, so I have here, this is a donut hole tin. You can see that mm -hmm. it's round on the bottom, but you can also use a muffin, a mini muffin oh, tin yeah. if that's okay. what you have on hand. And what I've done is I filled the batter three quarters of the way. You don't want to overfill it because it's going to poof in the oven. And I put it on 325 for 15 to 20 minutes. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. You're not going to believe this. Awesome, this. No, I'm Joy. so yeah. intrigued by this. <laughs> okay. And, and it makes a lot. It makes 48. So if you have multiple mu um, donut hole tins or mini muffin tins, you could put them all in at the same time. But if you don't, you'll make them in batches. So guys, look, they you pop out. Now, look at that. The, the underneath is a perfect circle. It's a little bit sphere-like on the top, but that's okay because underneath you pop them upside down. They're just oh, beautiful. And yeah. so we have to take it over the top now with a dusting of sugary cinnamon mm. goodness. Okay. So here I have um, two tablespoons of sugar. And it sounds like, you know, oh my God, she's putting sugar and cinnamon. There's just a dusting on everything. And these are so much lower in sugar and fat and calories than the real McCoy. Okay. And then I have a heaping quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Okay. And I'm just going to mix this up. I love and I have a little, too. this is melted butter. It's just a tablespoon. And I have a little brush. And this I take my brush awesome. and I dip <laughs> the underneath. I know, right? Guys, I put this in the addictive category. I'm telling you. I want this and right now. And you can now. either sprinkle the um, topping on, or you could yeah, just dunk, dunk it, right it in. just <laughs> like this. You should see our faces <laughs> right now, Joy. We're like longing right now to come through the screen. This is, I, I just made a whole bunch. I mean, we're talking a hole in one. <laughs> wow. Me. They're soft, they're moist, they're filled with cakey deliciousness, but that dusting brings it over the top. I just, it, it's a little bit mean, but I'm going to take a bite because I just got to show you the inside. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. As you should. So, Joy, I'm just wondering, mm. I know, like, injectables are, are, were all the rage at, at one point. Could you inject those with anything, like, like a strawberry jam? Or? Well, now you're just <laughs> you trying put, to make me do too much. You, you totally can. You could put anything into the middle. What I would say is first let them cook in the oven because mm -hmm. I want to firm up that cake. And then you just inject whatever you want into the inside. If you want to get that inside warm, you could put it back in the oven for a minute or two. So it's sort of like oozes. Oh, my goodness. And then you could do your topping. Yeah. I'm just These listen. are insanely <laughs> We're delicious. Sold. And one, one other thing I'll say is that if you want to boost the superpowers, instead of the one cup of applesauce, you can also swap in one cup of canned pumpkin puree oh, wow. or canned sweet potato. Okay. Well, and I it just takes it in a little bit of a different flavor direction. But, like, honestly, again, guys, I just, it's so mean. I just got everything about it. Yeah. Joy, thank you so I'm much. i doing it this weekend. Thank right? you, Joy. That and we want to come over to this beautiful kitchen. So between the two things, it's just um, magic. Come, you guys are invited over any day of the week. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Joy. And for this recipe, although this one we actually might remember, Without it. Yeah, without the recipe. Right? Yeah. Today.com slash food. Love it.
there and welcome to Start Today. I'm Stephanie Mansour, today's fitness contributor. Whether you're starting to exercise for the first time or striving to reach fitness goals, the new year offers the perfect chance to push yourself to new heights. And you've come to the right place for guidance and motivation. Start Today is today's wellness and fitness community where over 100,000 members share their health journeys. Last year, we gathered members of our Start Today community to walk through Universal Studios. And now we're taking it a step further. In this episode, we'll share healthy and delicious recipes, workouts that you can do at home, and some incredible transformations. Before I began helping people, I went on my own health journey to lose weight and gained an understanding of the importance of working out and eating well. In the Start Today group, I've gotten the chance to know incredible individuals who are on their own wellness journeys, sharing their progress to motivate others. Recently, I spoke with Karen Dallas, whose life has been transformed through thoughtful and committed exercise. Let's take a look. So I would love for us to share with everyone. Um, first of all, can you tell us like how you found the Start Today group? Sure. Um, a few years ago, I went through terrible trauma. I, I lost so many loved ones, including my husband, and so I was really in a dark place. So I spent a couple of years working on healing myself emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Uh, and then earlier this year, I thought now's the time to tackle this uh, physical yeah. element of it because I had gained so much weight during this time. And um, so I thought I'm going to start researching uh, groups that I could be a part of. And before I even got started on the research, I received an email from the Today Show and it said, join our June walking challenge. And I thought, hey, I could walk. Yeah. You know, I can do a walking challenge. So I signed up that day. Uh -huh. It was June 1st. It was June 1st when I got the email. Yep. And so I signed up that day and I got going and um, never looked back. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, all right, so and then can you tell everyone like where you were at then? Because I know, um, I remember like it was hard for you to, to walk like oh. without being in pain, right? Yeah, you know, I knew I could walk. I was, I was ready to go. I was all energized. I got about a block down the street and I thought, oh, Lord help me. I'm not going to make it. So I had to stop and stretch my back out. My back was hurting so badly. And I thought, if my neighbors see me, they're probably going to call 911 because I was just a mess. I was a mess. And if this was so odd for me because I've always been so active, mm -hmm. you know, up until the last few years. And so it was rough. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I, I went a block. I would stretch. I'd walk another block. I'd stretch. Yeah. And that went on for a couple of weeks. I thought, I'm not giving up. I'm yeah. not giving up. I'm, I can do this. Yeah, what made and, you not give up? Like, what what made it like a, a wake up call instead of like you know a reason to keep yourself sidelined? Well, if I don't change, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can't. I don't want this to be my life. Yeah, I don't want to be in pain. I'm too young to be in this kind of shape. I want to have a good quality of life, a good retirement. I want to do fun things. By the end of June, no pain. I was walking the full 20 to 30 minutes a day. Okay. So you can do it. You just have to stick with it. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And then give us kind of an overview of like June until now. Like give us, give us your successes. Well, in July, since I was feeling pretty good about myself at that point, that I could actually walk. Right. <laughs> I signed up for one of your uh, sessions, the weight loss group. Uh huh. So that was the first time I actually joined uh, a community uh -huh. of like-minded people, and we were in this to lose some weight. Yeah. And that was life-changing for me as well. Yeah. So um, I joined that as a 12-week program. Mm -hmm. Made it through the 12 weeks didn't have enough apparently because I signed up a second time Right, right. and, then, and now we're in it again and I, I'm just really making very positive changes yes I love it and we'll talk more about those programs in a minute too because I want people to know you know it's it's like you've made so many changes like you've you've changed how you view food you've changed like the emotional eating component of all of this 
um, your mood, your your like energy around right. the exercise and the eating and the taking care of yourself, prioritizing yourself has has really transformed from where you were, you know, prior to six months ago. Um, okay. So what can you tell everyone how much weight you've lost and like the different the difference in your energy levels and your outlook? I've lost about 20 pounds uh, mm -hmm. since June. Um, well, really since July, uh -huh. trying to get that walking implemented. I didn't start losing weight until I joined the weight loss group. Yeah. And so I've lost about 20 pounds since July. Uh -huh. uh, building a great foundation. I think the thing is to do something sustainable that you can manage for the rest of your life. Right. I don't want to lose 20 pounds to gain back 20 pounds. Right. You know, I want to maintain this. So I'm building a great foundation. I feel confident that I can continue and this is going to be a lifelong uh, habit for me. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And what are three tips that you would give someone um, like they're just starting out or maybe they're like you and they, they were walking, you know, down the block and then already in pain. Like what, what tips would you give to them, if any? <laughs> Oh, I, I could write a book on tips, maybe okay. not, what not to do, but uh, a few things to do is uh, find your community. I think that's one of the most important. Find your uh, team, your cheerleading squad, uh, people that support you. My sister's my biggest cheerleader. Uh, my neighbors, my friends, our community. Yeah. Our community is, oh, I, I'm thankful every day. Yes. Them. They make my, my gratitude journal very oh. <laughs> um one of the things you can get wisdom so much just from a t-shirt sometimes and i have this t-shirt that i wear that says no one succeeds alone oh and that I love is that. so true yeah so doubt you can't do this alone mm -hmm. you've got to have a team around you and you've got to have people supporting you so that's one tip i love uh, it I, I would say the second tip is something that i learned from you Perfection is not sustainable. Yes. Let's go for that passing grade. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're going for a C. We're just right. looking to pass. We do not get bonus points if we get a B or an A plus or extra credit on the A plus, you know. Yes. I was I always that. an A student, so that took me a minute, but when it clicked, it clicked. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, I can do this. I can do a C at least every day. Some days will be an A, some days will be a B, but we're going to yeah. shoot for that C. Yep. And then and some days might be an F, but it'll oh, balance well, out to yeah. a C. Yeah, we try not to talk about those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, some days are an F. <laughs> some days you just sit around in your pajamas, okay? Right. And that's all right. Right, exactly, exactly. And I'd probably say my third tip would be you can do hard things. Mm. You know, don't sell yourself short. Mm. You can do this. Um, life is hard, you know, life sucks sometimes, but then it's great. Yeah. You know, life is also great. So you can do hard things. You can get through this. You can have a better quality of life. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're all here for you. We're mm -hmm. all here to support you. Yeah. Re reach out for help. Yep. Go back to tip one. Have your yeah. community. <laughs> Correct. That's right. What a transformation. It was so great to chat with Karen and hear her story. Coming up, we'll be digging deep into meal prep with three easy recipes anyone can make. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. What's the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. 
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Start Today. Part of feeling your best is fueling your body with fruits, vegetables, protein, fat, and yes, carbs. To help set us up for success in the kitchen, registered dietitian Vanessa Rosetto is here with three simple recipes to make meal prep easier. Hey, Vanessa. Hi, so nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh what are gosh. we making today? Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're making egg cups. Egg Ooh. cups are super yes. easy. They help you with batch cooking and uh -huh. meal prep. Everybody always wants things to be done quickly. Yes. And so today we're going to get it done. I love it. So many of our members ask for quick, you know, grab and go breakfast. Yep. So I love making egg muffins myself. So I'm totally. excited to get started. Yeah. And it's not just a breakfast. It can be lunch and a dinner and a snack. Perfect. Yeah. So we are going to start with our inclusions. Okay. Um, we're gonna start with some spinach, good source mm -hmm. of fiber, Love it. vitamin K, it's gonna help you. Um, <laughs> we have some cheddar cheese, good source of fat, and then onions, it's just gonna give us a little bit of bite and kick. So okay. I like to mix those together, mix it up, and then okay. you're gonna take a quarter cup and just like loosely pack into oh. the muffin tin. Now, can you use different types of cheese, like feta? I yes. love feta. Feta cheese is naturally low fat, it's uh -huh. also helpful for people who are lactose intolerant because it's made from sheep's milk. Okay. Uh, but you never have to go and buy low fat feta because it's already low fat. Okay. Which is amazing. It's a great tip. Yes. So okay, so gonna, what do we do next? So you're gonna pack that in. Oh, that's I see. We be, put this in, in the bottom. Yes, you put that in the oh. bottom. Yes. It's just a better way to fill it properly right. so you don't over. I've always been filling these wrong. And then it, and then it goes <laughs> up, right? Yes, it does. And <laughs> yeah. I wonder why it's like exploding over the top. Yeah. Okay. So I have eight <laughs> eggs here. I'm gonna whisk these till they're pretty smooth. So then we're gonna have some salt Every and last. pepper. All right. Backwards and milk, just so okay. we can like fluff that up. Okay, so, great. Can people use almond milk or you know other types of milk if they're lactose intolerant? You can. Okay. The only thing is that the almond milk, if you are picking one that's sweetened or yeah. vanilla, it's going to give it a different flavor. Right. So you're going to want to make sure that you pick one that is unsweetened and original flavor. Original flavor. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. you don't want to change that out. Okay, okay. Great. So we're just going to start pouring. Okay. Just like so, we want to make sure not to overfill. Yeah. So we might have to like go back and forth a little bit. That's another problem I've had making these. I fill everything up to the yeah. brim. And then it just like goes really high <laughs> yeah. and yeah. then you're kind of in a little bit of trouble. But that's okay. So if you had if you had two of these every day, you'd have enough for breakfast for six days, almost Correct. a whole week. Yeah. 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 And these microwave nicely after we bake them and 30 seconds. Them. Okay. Like like very quick. This okay. is like you will be very happy. Yes. With so now we're gonna put these in the oven at 325 for 20 to 25 minutes and we'll know that they're done when we, you know, feel them being firm. So okay. if we wanna just like head over to the oven yeah. and put them in, we can get started. Great. These look so good. Uh, I know. I'm sometimes <laughs> impressed by myself. Yes. Um, so, you know, you let these cool for about okay. five to seven minutes. We don't want to burn the roof of our mouths. Okay. Um, and then we can store them okay. up to five days. Can I try oh, one? Of course. Okay, good. Oh my God. It tastes better than it looks, yeah. actually. It's super delicious. And wow. This is like the beginning of the batch cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody mm -hmm. thinks like a batch cook and meal prep is just like five containers with the same gross right. salad that you're gonna have to eat every single day. And right. that's not true. It's like having a series of proteins, yes. a series of fruits and vegetables and things that you could just grab very quickly. Yeah. And this is something that obviously you can have for breakfast. Mm -hmm. You can have two of them for breakfast with a side of berries. Okay. You can have it for dinner or lunch with uh -huh. a side salad. Mm -hmm. You can, two or three of them, you can mm -hmm. have one as a snack. Yeah. It's just like super versatile and like easily stored. Yes. So the next thing we're gonna do is shredded chicken. Yes. Okay, so, I gotta be honest with you. This, this really grosses me out. I am not a fan of the raw meat. Well. But it's because I don't like watching the transformation from raw to cooked. So I think this is great. I can just leave it in there and, and not think about it. 100%. This is for you. So I'm okay. going to give you the Oh, tongs. thank God. Okay, I don't have to touch this with my hands. <laughs> yep. All right. So it's okay. two pounds of chicken. Chicken is a great source of protein. And we're going to use some neutral spices here. So garlic powder and some pepper. Mm-hmm. And some salt. Okay. And then... We are going to add chicken broth. You could also do vegetable broth. Okay. Uh, just don't do water because then it will have no, no flavor, flavor. Okay. and you will be miserable. Okay. Then <laughs> so, you will wonder why you did this. Yeah. And so then we're just going to put it four hours on high. Good. And once I do this, I do not have to look at it until no. it's done. That's right. So this is done. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, Vanessa, I've actually never 
shredded chicken before. Oh, I'm gonna show you. A lot of our members know I, I like eating healthy, but yeah. I don't enjoy cooking that much. So this is great so far, but how do I shred? Okay, so you're gonna take both okay. of your forks, okay. and you're gonna go right here. See the sits, okay. Opposites, and then you're right. just going to pull. Okay. So you can just pull it, you can have as little pieces or as big oh. pieces as you'd like. Okay, this is actually working. Yes, it is wow. working. It You're is. a genius. I mean, <laughs> you know, we season this really uh -huh. neutral uh -huh. so that we could repurpose this chicken for later. So okay. I usually have this as my emergency protein in my refrigerator. Yes, great right? idea. And so then you could use it to make tacos, uh -huh. burritos. You could also just like put this on top of a salad later. Yeah, yeah. You could boil some pasta and put that on the side mm -hmm. and then also have some vegetables. So it doesn't need to be this like perfectly plated chicken right. breast, right? right? And yeah. it doesn't and it doesn't have to be made today, mm -hmm. right? You can mm -hmm. just make it and then have it for later. Yeah, and I love this. This is one of those principles of meal prepping. You want to be able to repurpose things. So the fact that we didn't overly season this or, you know, right. do a too elaborate of a recipe That's right. makes it really easy for us to use That's this right. for many different meals. Very easy. Right, so coming up next, you're going to make a sauce. Cilantro avocado sauce. Yum. Mm -hmm. That could go on the chicken. Exactly. See, this is how we meal prep. So I'm going to start with the avocado. Okay. So you're going to do a quarter, mm -hmm. so half of a half. Okay. That looks so nice and fresh. Oh. Oh. And this is a healthy fat. Healthy fat, yep. exactly. But you know, the serving size, which I tell people all the time, mm -hmm. is a quarter. Okay. Right? And so, but a whole one, if you, uh -huh. eat, if you eat an entire avocado, it would be 10 grams of fiber. Okay. But it would be really high in saturated fat, so we want to stick to that right. quarter of, right. of it. So, okay. then you're going to add the cilantro. Okay. Just whole like this? Whole like that, okay. stems and all. Okay. Ooh, this is pot. easy. I know. I like <laughs> to make things easy. Garlic. Okay. Now, you know, I'm half Italian and we love our garlic, so could I do more than this if I wanted? Yes. Okay. It's just that, you know, everybody right. is particular and they might think this is spicy. Right. I would probably do six cloves. But right, two, right, okay. Two is fine. <laughs> two is fine. <laughs> then we're going to do a plain Greek yogurt. And so, Ooh. you know, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates uh -huh. help to keep you full. So where are we getting the protein from? We have to get it from the yogurt. Greek yogurt. Exactly. Okay. So it's about 21 grams of protein. Okay. You have the fat from the avocado. Yeah. Flavor. It's great. So now we're going to add some salt. Okay. Lime juice. Ooh. And then a little bit of water, about two thirds of a cup. So I'm just going to smooth this out. I personally like it to be like a little bit chunky. Okay. But you know. To the each their own. Exactly. <laughs> the preference is yours. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It smells like I'm in a restaurant. No. This I know. was so easy to make. <laughs> so I have some here okay, for you. Oh, to thank taste. you so Please much. Taste. Okay. Mmm. Yeah. So good. I love this. Yep. You can put that on top mm -hmm. of a green bowl. You mm -hmm. can put that inside of a sandwich, like a you know, a turkey wrap or mm -hmm. something. You I would put it on a salad too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of our members talk too about how they have all those staples. Like they have the chicken or they have the ground beef or even even pastas and salads, but they're looking to jazz things up. So this is a great way. This is so flavorful. Totally. It's beautiful. Yeah. I bet the store is great in the fridge too. Five days in the fridge, or you can also just you know, portion it out into Ziploc bags if you want to make a oh, number of them and okay. just like date them. And then you can just keep pulling them out. Because that's the other thing. Maybe you're not going to want this every week. Right. But it's nice to have it in your arsenal and just yes. know you can put it out and it stores really great and you can put it on anything. Amazing. Thanks, Vanessa. I'm so glad. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Well, coming up next, I'm sharing a few exercises from our January Fitness Challenge. So stay tuned. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. NBC News, streaming free now. 
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> It's a new year and we're focusing on building healthy habits for both our mind and body. I'm going to walk you through a few exercises to strengthen the upper body, lower body, and finally the core. And the best part, you don't need any equipment. We're gonna get started with a modified push-up. This is a push-up on your knees. So lowering down onto the mat, we're gonna line the wrists up with the front of the mat. Then shift your shoulders forward over your wrists and bring the knees back a couple of inches behind the hips. Pull the abs in tight, and then we're gonna lower down, chest towards the floor, elbows out to the sides, and press up. Lower down and press up, good. This is modified because we're on our knees to take pressure off of the wrists and make this a little bit easier. Great job. Now the next move is arm circles. And you might say, gosh, well how can I work my arms if I don't have any weights? Well, let me tell you, if you do this for 60 seconds, forwards and backwards, you are gonna feel the burn. This is something super simple that you can do while you're waiting for something to microwave, while you're stirring something on the stove and waiting for it to boil. You can lift your arms up and start to do arm circles, or you can even do this while you're waiting in line. The next exercise starts with a squat, but we move the squat by turning it into a walking squat. So we're gonna start with the feet as wide as the hips. Pull the abs in, reach the glutes back, coming into that squat. Then we're gonna step to the side and bring the foot into the squat position and lower down. Then we're gonna step to the side, bring the foot to meet it in the squat position and lower down. You can go side to side with this and just make sure you do that squat as you bring the feet back into the squat position. Great job. Next, we're gonna do something similar, but this time with a lunge, but not just any lunge, we're gonna do a half lunge. So we're gonna start with one foot forward and one foot back, feet as wide as the hips. We're gonna bend both knees halfway, so about a 45 degree angle here, as opposed to a full lunge with that 90 degree angle. So this halfway lunge here, and then we're gonna step forward and lower down into that half lunge. And then you can turn around and do this again, walking forward about five times with each leg. So here we go in that half lunge, and then we step into the half lunge, and we step into the half lunge. Great job. Now, the last exercise we're gonna do is for the core. So we're gonna get down on the ground. Now again, this is a total full body workout without any equipment. So lowering down onto your back, what we're gonna do next is lift the legs up, pull the abs in by taking a deep breath in. Exhale pull that navel in towards the spine. Now from here, we're gonna curl up and reach towards one foot, lowering the other foot down, and then switch and reach up. Good, switch and reach up, switch and reach up. It's okay to lower the shoulder blades a little bit as you're switching the legs, and then you curl up higher to reach towards the toes. If you can't touch the toes, and if you're touching the shins, that's okay too. Great job, everyone. I hope you feel stronger with these exercises. Coming up, I'll be answering our viewers' burning questions. Stay with us. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels the like. Latest film, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. 
We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Our Start Today community is unbelievable. I am so proud of everyone that's involved at every step of the journey. So many questions come up as we reach our health and wellness goals, and I thought I'd answer a few today. First up, our viewer Heather sent in a question. With the weather change, how can we change our walks to still walk every day in a safe way? Well, Heather, that's a great question, and I'm a huge fan of using your environment to help you reach your fitness goals. So if you want, bundle up, put on layers, add on your hat, mittens, scarf, and go outside for your walk, but maybe keep it shorter than you would on the warmer days. Or you can plan out your week, look at the weather, and go for short walks or longer walks when the weather's warmer, and then take your workout inside when it's just too cold outside. You can simply walk in place, or you can do some strength training at home. Another community member, Lisa, asked, If you get sidelined by an injury and can't walk, how can you get your cardio in? All right, well, we're gonna do some punches, also overhead presses, and some arm circles. All of these options are forms of upper body cardio. So they're gonna get your heart rate up without you even having to move your legs or walk. You can do these seated if you want as well. Now, because the arms have smaller muscles in them than your legs, they are going to tire more quickly, but I would recommend doing 30 seconds on and then 30 seconds off for 10 minutes. Next, Lisa asked, how do I stretch properly before and after exercising? So to stretch before exercising, I recommend dynamic stretching. So I'm gonna show you a dynamic stretch for the hip flexors. Before walking, you wanna mimic the motion that you're gonna be doing. So we're moving forward and then coming back to center to stretch that hip flexor. Another stretch that you can do before walking is butt kicks to stretch out those quads because we're using the quads to walk. Now, after your workout or after your walk, you wanna hold the stretch. This is called static stretching. We've already worn up, we've loosened up the muscles, and now we are soothing the muscles and relaxing them. Similarly, you can hold that lunge for 10 to 20 seconds after your workout or after your walk to feel that stretch. Another viewer, Tisha, asked, if someone has knee pain, how do they go about healing from that in order to start walking regularly. Do this one exercise if you have knee pain. I want you to point your leg forward and squeeze your quad to pull your kneecap up and in proper alignment. Then slowly lift the leg up and lower it down. Engaging the quad and primarily working the lower part of the quad which helps to keep the kneecap stabilized. You can do this in the morning, right when you get out of bed, just stand up out of bed, place your hand on the nightstand or on the dresser, or place your hands on your hips, 10 on each side. And lastly, Ashley sent in a question. I work at a hospital, so I'm always tempted by treats, candy, you name it. Suppliers give us food. Providers give us food, and of course the patients give us food, and we can't turn that down. How do I avoid these temptations? Please help. Well, Ashley, instead of hearing those sweets calling your name, the candy and everything when you're walking by, I want you to hear me in your ear saying protein, protein, protein. Protein is the key to help keep sugar cravings at bay. So you wanna make sure that you're eating protein with every meal and snack. And I'd recommend that you set an alarm so that you're eating protein every three to four hours. Set your alarm for nine for breakfast, 
12.30 for lunch, 4 for a snack, and 7 o'clock for dinner. We accomplished so much today, from Karen's transformation to Vanessa's tips and all of the great viewer questions. It looks like we have all we need to start today in the best way. We hope you'll join us next time on Start Today. I'm a compost queen. I have become one with the compost. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Waste. From your rotten produce to your leftover takeout containers, there's a lot of it in the food system these days. A recent study found that the average U.S. household trashes about 30% of its food. That adds up to a mind-blowing $240 billion a year, literally going in the garbage. I know waste seems like a huge problem to tackle when you're just one person, and corporations need to do their part. But a few small changes can make an impact. So today, I'm all about that low-to-no-waste lifestyle. I'll be cooking with an expert in the sustainable food space, social star Max Lamana. Then I'm headed to a restaurant that composts all of its food waste. But first, my fridge needs a little love. So I'm headed to a low waste grocery store and it looks like I've got some packing to do. I'm about to head out to go to Precycle, which is a zero waste grocery store in Brooklyn. The thing about a zero waste grocery store is that there's no packages, so I've got to come prepared. And luckily, I love being prepared. So, I'm gonna start packing up. Precycle was started by Katerina Bogatereva in 2018. Her goal? Eliminate wasteful plastic from food packaging. In 2019, over 140 million tons of single-use plastics were thrown out globally. While bulk bins for dried goods have existed at health food stores for many years, Katerina had a different vision. A one-stop shop with everything from flour to produce and even cleaning supplies, all without single-use packaging. Why did you decide to start Recycle? Well, actually it started with my own personal struggles to, to live a, a lower waste um, lifestyle. Uh, when my son was five years old, he was in a kindergarten and he had a sustainability lesson. So one day he came home and he said, Mommy, do you know how long the plastic will remain in a landfill? And at that moment, it sort of like made me realize that we have a responsibility towards um, next future generations. So I took a very close look at my own trash at home and um, I realized that a lot of the waste that I create actually comes from food shopping, whether it's a packaging or food waste itself. So we can <laughs> thank your son for this establishment? In a way, yes. You know, it feels like a really big challenge, right, for people to overhaul all of their life choices. It's possible to shop uh, with creating less waste in, in any store. It's just kind of seeing seeing the right products. For example, I don't know, instead of canned beans, we, one can buy dry beans in a bulk store using a fabric bag, or just shopping in the perimeter of the store for um, unpackaged produce, or going to farmer's market. And I think a lot of people get really excited when they go to a grocery store and they want to get everything, right? Exactly, yeah. I think shopping for one or two meals or a couple of days in advance is the key because one tend to buy a lot and then with every day that that product sits in your fridge is less likely you're going to use it um, and that creates a lot of waste. Katerina, not to brag or anything, but I came very prepared. So tell me how I get started. Okay, it's very easy. So we're gonna just weigh your, your containers okay. um, so that we know what to deduct when we check you out. All right? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Here I go. go. And the weight is 0.97. We're gonna write it with this um, washable marker. Oh, that's edgy. There we go. Perfect, and then you're gonna deduct this from whatever I'm putting in here. Exactly. Amazing, this is so easy. Forgot containers? 
Don't worry, the store has a selection of glass jars and reusable bags. So Sama, what are you making today? Honestly, what am I not making today, Katarina? <laughs> but actually, I came here specifically to make a pasta. Oh, wonderful. I have a really nice selection. Let's you. Come go. this way. So this variety is amazing. Where do you source all of these amazing ingredients from? So about 95% of all the products in the store are sourced locally and about 80 hyper locally. So yeah. um, this pasta is from New Jersey and this is uh, made uh, in upstate New York. Wow. I also loaded up on my favorite kitchen staples like moong dal, cashews, and of course, a ton of dates. This is the only appropriate size to get some medjool dates, okay? Precycle even has extra virgin olive oil and honey on tap. Even the tofu here comes without wrapping. It feels very overwhelming on where to start. Do you have a couple easy, actionable tips for somebody looking to reduce their waste? Some of the simple ones are reusable water bottle, your own coffee cup if you go to a coffee shop, or just simply bringing a bag. Or if you want to challenge yourself and maybe that's the next step, you can also look into just what waste you're creating and pick an item that you can replace or, or source differently that works for you. Um, I think it's a very individual journey. It's, it's the, it, there's no recipe that yeah. fits all. Single-use plastics are nearly impossible to avoid at most grocery stores. But shopping at Precycle gave me a new perspective on what's possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. So it's nice to meet you nice and thank you for having me in. It also had me wondering, how can I waste less in the kitchen? Up next, I've got a virtual cooking lesson with Max Lamana, a vegan chef known for his tasty and sustainable recipes. This is what it looks and feels. From the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. Back at my apartment, I couldn't wait to get cooking. To help upgrade my low-waste game, I called on London-based chef Max Lamana. Max is a vegan social star who focuses on sustainable cooking, and I am here for it. Max, it's so good to see you and chat with you. We are online Instagram friends, but not real life, and this is as close as we're gonna get right now since you're in London. Uh, hopefully when we meet in real life in IRL, we'll, we'll, we could be friends as well. We can be friends and we can cook in person, but for now we're cooking online. Can you talk to me about your background and also what you sort of specialize in when it comes to food? Yeah, I'm a low waste chef. Uh, I started cooking maybe about 15 years ago. Uh, my first job was in a pizza restaurant and I've kind of just worked every single position in a restaurant. So yeah, a few years ago I started seeing the, the, the problem that we, we're all currently living with because at the end of the day, it's not just food that we're wasting, it's money, it's time, it's energy, it's water, it's transportation, it's packaging. There's so much that goes into the production of food that just throwing away food doesn't make any sense. In 2019, Americans threw away over 133 billion pounds of food. The major culprits are typically fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. And uh, potatoes and bread. So 
a lot is being thrown away, um, but we as consumers can make small changes every day to waste less food. On Instagram, Max teaches his 1 million followers easy, low-waste food tips. One in particular went pretty viral. Yes, you really can eat an entire strawberry, stems, leaves, and all. Okay, I'm really excited to get cooking with you, so can you tell me what we are making today? Are you ready? We are making cauliflower alfredo. Yes. That's it. Simple. Easy. But Delicious. there is a little no waste secret because we're going to use the entire thing, right? The entire thing. Nothing's going to waste, Sama. Everything. Yes. The core, the leaves, even this guy right here, the florets. Everything. First up, prepping our cauliflower. I just have a saucepan of water behind me and that's on a low boil right now. It doesn't get much simpler than this. You don't need to prep or cut or do anything. You just literally take the entire cauliflower, submerge it in the water for about five minutes until it gets fork tender. Um, but I am gonna put some salt in there. You with me, Sama? I'm with you, but I'm just gonna chop it up super roughly before I add it into my steaming basket. You know, you can also save your leaves, and if you were, if you wanted to, you can roast them in in the oven, and they would be nice and crunchy and crispy, a little soft and tender on the inside. Without further ado, Sama, I'm, You're gonna I'm pop ready it to in? give this cauliflower okay. a bath. The cauliflower steams for about five minutes, just until fork tender. Now, on to the garlic. What you can do with garlic peelings. Um, you can actually eat the whole entire garlic peeling as well, um, but we're not gonna, we won't do that here today. You're not gonna demo um, that for me? I'm upset. I won't, I won't, I won't <laughs> demo that for you. I'm not, I'm not gonna eat it. No, I'm not. So, two things you can do. You can dehydrate the skin uh, once it gets nice and dried. Uh, you can blend it into a powdery uh, consistency, and that can be uh, basically a, a powder that can go into any kind of like soups, stews, or stir fries. The other thing I like to do is that I actually keep my peelings. Yeah, I keep my peelings and we'll make a veg stock afterwards. Max sauteed his garlic in olive oil for a subtle sweetness, but I'm leaving mine raw for a spicier kick. So I love this recipe because it, the sauce is super easy. So you're literally just adding all the ingredients into a blender. I'm just gonna cut right down the cauliflower. My cauliflower is finally done. Ta-da! Okay, so we're both adding our cauliflower, uh, florets, stems, leaves, all of the above. I will add my garlic and pasta water. Okay, so I'm gonna add my garlic in, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of my reserve pasta water, just a touch. And this will just help it blend, and also it's a nice way to not waste our pasta water. It gets everything really nicely nice and velvety. You are using silken tofu for this recipe, right? And I'm gonna right. use hummus. So this is kind of a nice alternative. If you don't do soy, you can try it with hummus. If you do like soy, you can try it with tofu. So we've got options for everyone. And what do you options. think the tofu adds to your Alfredo, Max? Uh, tofu is adding protein, but it's also adding another layer of creaminess as well. Maybe a lighter creaminess than the hummus, but still creamy. Do you have lemon in yours? We have. Lemon. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna grab my lemon. Yep. And I wanna ask you what you do with lemon peel. The, the peel itself has so much flavor in it. If I'm gonna use the juice, I use the zest first and then use the juice. The other thing I like to do as well, if I'm not gonna use my lemons in time, I blend the whole entire lemon. Really? With some water and then I pour them into ice cube trays, freeze it, and next day I have frozen lemon cubes. And then I can add some, you know, sparkling water. That's really nice, I'm gonna try that. Half the lemon gets zested right into the blender. The rest is saved for later. We've got a lot of our elements in here, but now we're gonna go in with some nutritional yeast, right? A little bit of yes. cheesiness, a savory flavor. Nutritional All right, what yeast. are you adding next? I'm gonna add some vegan Parmesan. Nice. So this is cool because yeah. we've got the nutritional yeast for that cheesy flavor. You're using some vegan parm. And then the cauliflower, the tofu, the hummus, they all add these really nice, yeah, yeah, like mm, creamy mm, elements, mm, right? Mm. That's, this is, this is my preparation dance for once it's all coming together. It's like, mm, mm, mm. 
I had some leftover veggie stock, so I poured that in for a little extra flavor. Mm, mm, I'm practicing. <laughs> Enough dancing. Time to get blending again. I just hit the switch. <laughs> The two creamy sauces are complete. I'm ready for the pasta. Do you also have some fettuccine? I do. I'm using fettuccine pasta. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to probably add a little bit of the sauce into the pan to start, just to get it cool. nicely coated with the pasta. And then I'll go ahead and add the pasta in there. And then I'll go ahead and add some of the rest of the sauce. There are some other things you can do with the sauce because there's quite a bit of it, right? Totally. So what you could end up doing with the sauce is use it for soups, use it for stews, use it for even a dip. I mean, I think having a little bit of like a, a chip in there is really good. Quite, quite nice. Okay, so I'm going to add my pasta into my little pan and the rest of my sauce. It's so creamy. It's like luscious. I love a saucy pasta, so I love recipes that yield a lot of sauce because I'm like, let's go, you know? A gentle toss in the sauce ensures every piece of pasta is well coated. I'm, more, I'm, I'm ready to plate up, Sama. I'm ready to plate up too, Max. Okay, so I'm gonna save this pasta sauce for tomorrow, but you could also freeze it too, so that's another option. Time to give this pasta a no-waste taste. So we've got our pepper, we've got our lemon zest, we've got our salt. What do you want to garnish with, the lemon zest? Off on the side, just on top, some lemon zest. Beautiful. I'm happy with the result. How's it looking it on your delicious. end? delicious. You know what I think we both have in common is that our phones eat before us. Shall we grab a little our photo? do eat before us. Okay, ready? I'm ready to eat. You ready to eat? I'm ready, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. This is so unexpected and so good. So creamy. Mmm. That's what I was just going to say. I said this is very, very creamy. So what are some yeah. tips that you have, some other tips for people who are looking to reduce their waste in the kitchen and while they're cooking? I think the most practical and easy thing is to cook the food you already have before going out and buying more food. Then shopping and creating a list with that shopping list. And stick to that list, don't go off the list, buying other different bits and bobs, like stick to that list. Um, but before you go there, I think find recipes that work with your schedule. Donating food is a great option, but also my favorite, compost. Composting food shows that food is going back into the earth, back into the soil to give rich nutrients to the soil, giving rich, uh, rich nutrients to the plants that grow our food. Max, this was so much fun. And thank you for doing your work and educating and inspiring people to cook and eat no waste and low waste. It's incredible. That's delicious. This recipe is going to be on repeat for me. This is what it looks and feels like. the storm zone. The bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> you get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Composting is a crucial part of a low-waste lifestyle. At Papil Gustative in Santa Monica, the owners are committed to composting 100% of leftover food. They operate their own kitchen-to-compost facility where scraps are turned into nutrient-rich mulch. Let me show you around uh, how our low waste establishment. Let's do it. Papil Gustatif translates to taste buds in Latin. It's run by Kalen Senchak and his wife Marina. They use simple but effective methods to cut down on waste. So starting with the to-go, everything is compostable. Starting from the lids, uh, the trays, of course the napkins, and all the cutlery is made out of wood of, or out of compostable uh, material, paper straws, even our uh, trash bags, if you see, is a special trash bags that are compostable as well. Even the restaurant's napkins are hand sewn from recycled jean scraps. And to avoid plastic in the kitchen, chefs use only glass bowls and containers. And what happens, Kaylin, to maybe the fruit or vegetables that aren't perfect when you receive them? We make jams, we make pastries, and for that we actually look for, for fruits and, and vegetables that might be aesthetically blemished, right, but they are perfect. And we, we hate to see the farmers uh, have to throw those away. You have a really huge compost mission with this restaurant. Can you show me how that's kind of done back here as well? Yes, this is our own compost, which is coffee, food, greens, eggshells, avocado peels, everything else. Eggshells even? Yes, That's of course, amazing. eggshells. Eggs eggs and coffee actually are one of the best things that you can feed the, the soil for plants, yes? Because of the calcium, because of all the other nutrients. So that's that makes your garden beautiful. I am so excited and ready to try your food, Kaylin. Should we get into it? Absolutely, let's try everything. Let's do it. Marina and Kaylin are both passionate about building sustainable habits, which led them to the food industry. What was your inspiration behind starting this restaurant? First, we actually were inspired just to open a coffee shop. Uh, coffees and tea, single origin, uh, like really good quality. But then eventually people were asking us about more. They wanted food, they wanted breakfast, they wanted lunch, and we expanded gradually. But Kaylin and Marina are just as focused on what happens after the tables are cleared. You own the composting process from start to finish, even the facility. Can you tell me about that process from start to finish? We have this uh, little property in, in downtown where we have another company and we are thinking why don't we use that, right? So we, we did a little research and then it, it became clear that it's very easy to compost if you really put your, your heart into it. So all you have to do is dig some holes, aerate them properly, and just mix all your, your, your compost there. And then eventually you can use it from growing crops. What do you think the restaurant industry can learn from your low waste model? Well, they will learn that it's actually very easy to do. You only have to commit, you only have to put a system in place, and it's gonna make a great impact at the end of the day. You have kids, and this mission is really important to saving our Earth, right? Absolutely, we're doing it for uh, the future generation, we do it for our kids, we do it for everybody. For their kids and their kids and yes. for all the generations, yeah. The food here speaks for itself. They even have vegan croissants. Yes. This makes me so happy. I like can never have croissants. It's very important for me to take a photo of everything because otherwise I'll forget and this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. After lunch, my leftover scraps went straight into the compost bin. No food waste. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle comes. New numbers just out this morning. 
Good evening. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. We begin this hour with the latest developments. We're coming on the air with some shakeups big time on Capitol Hill. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. In Santa Monica, California, Papil Gustative is on a mission to stop food waste. I helped load up the truck that will take their kitchen scraps to the restaurant's very own composting facility. Kevin Conaway is Papil's expert composter. Compost for that, so. Cool. The composting site is located about an hour from the restaurant. Here, they've transformed an empty lot into an urban garden. What are we doing today? What you need to know about composting is that there's not much to know. <laughs> okay. It's pretty much just layering it up. Once we put everything in, what happens in the process? Microorganisms are gonna eat the food, they're gonna break it down, and pretty much it'll just disappear at all. Just it'll all just be wet. And we keep it wet, just just a little bit of water. Okay. If it gets too dry, it slows everything down. It's best to compost in a shady area. So Kevin dug up large pits by trees. But you can also compost in any kind of container, from a storage bin to a trash can. All right, Kevin, I'm ready to compost. This is everything we're composting today, right? Yep. First, we made a layer of green materials, which is basically anything left over from the kitchen or garden. Think veggie scraps, coffee grinds, eggshells, and plant trimmings. Stuff it out, yeah, make a mess. And then I can toss the bag in too, right? That's right. Then we added carbon-rich brown materials. This can include shredded paper, cardboard, twigs, and dried leaves. And what do those layers do? What is the cardboard, the sticks? Why are we adding that to the compost process? Because if you have all, or all scraps and no cardboard or no carbon on top of it, it just turns into a mushy, gooey mess. Then, just continue alternating with green and brown layers until the waste is all used up. Okay. Woo! I'm a compost queen. I have become one with the compost. Meat, dairy, and oils should only be broken down by industrial composting facilities. They can attract unwanted pests like rats and flies in a home garden. Meat can also contain harmful bacteria like salmonella, which can spread throughout a garden's edible plants. How long does it take for our compost to break down, Kevin? Generally, anywhere from six months to a year. If you keep it moist, it, it'll be pretty much ready to go in six, nine months. Finished compost is a nutrient-rich mulch. It's a deep brown that basically looks just like dirt. So what have you been growing then with the soil that you kind of can create through the composting Just process? vegetables, mostly. Okay. What yeah, kinds of vegetables? Yeah. Anything. Peppers, tomatoes, anything that Colleen thinks he needs for his uh, menu, then we'll plant it. This compost garden is still a work in progress, but by next spring, it will produce enough food for regular restaurant use. Kevin, it's really interesting because Vernon is such an industrial area, right? And you're literally creating a compost facility right in its backyard. You don't need a plot of land to compost. You can literally compost in an apartment, be on a smaller scale this kind of material in a landfill, it doesn't really break down and do any good. So instead of throwing them in the landfill and just going to waste, we can recycle those nutrients, put it back into the soil. Kevin, thank you so much for teaching me how to compost. It was shockingly way easier than I expected. And I will be back to reclaim my duties as your apprentice composter. <laughs> thank you. Managing food waste is a massive undertaking, and many changes can only be made through legislation. The EPA found that less than 10% of U.S. households had access to curbside compost collection in 2017. 
That's a lot of food we could be saving from landfills if we just had compost bins next to recycling and trash. Some big changes are already in the works. Major cities like Los Angeles and New York are expanding city-run composting. And those advances are due in large part to individuals petitioning for better policies. Sometimes it takes local changes to kickstart a global impact. Good Monday morning. This week starting with new threats of severe weather coast to coast. We are tracking it all. It is January 16th. This is today. Never ending, soaking rain 